Attention! The movie guys love movies. Any snarky comments made about this week's new releases and judging the hunkiness of the lead actors are clearly first world problems. And that brings the death toll in Egypt to nearly 800 this week alone. No word yet on whether the anti-coup alliance found Ashton Kutcher's take on Steve Jobs authentic or not. Back to you in the studio. <laughs> A reminder that while we goof, there's real stuff going on. Yeah, yeah. there is. Well, I think that that's, we couldn't be bothered with. That's yeah. the whole reason they're cooing. Hey, it's uniquely <laughs> American that we focus on bullshit, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. That's a great way to begin the show, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Movie Showcast, part of the vast and sprawling Movie Guys Empire. And here's an update on tonight's dinner. It was veal. <laughs> I repeat, veal. <laughs> The winner of tonight's Mystery Meat Contest is Jeffrey Corbin, who guessed some kind of beef. <laughs> <laughs> You've reached ground zero for all things movies and comedy. We bring the two together right here on our show every week with rants, sketches, previews, characters, jokes, bits, special guests, and more. You can expect that in the next hour or so as we broadcast from the Admiral's Club, smack dab in the middle of Burbank Airport's flyover zone. Catch us on iTunes and SoundCloud and YouTube as well. Search the Movie Showcast or the Movie Guys. We come right up. Uh, don't forget, we're also available on BadTomato.fm. That's a Friday show at 4 p.m. Eastern. Paul Preston here with Lee Caius, Adam Witten, Karen Volpe. And later in the show, we'll be talking to our special guest, Bill Cott. But first, previews of what's new in theaters. A patented service we... Per Lest you think we're not in the <laughs> Burbank Wait, there's a reason zone. we call it the how Admiral's often, Lounge. How often does that happen? So often you won't even notice. There you go. <laughs> uh, but... Uh, Let's see. we got a number of uh, previews to get to because that is our patented service on the show. We provide to you in our own unique way. And this week we're covering Simon Pegg and Nick Frost's return to greatness, greatness being director Edgar Wright, in The World's End, a movie that is surprisingly not about music, The Mortal Instruments, City of Bones, <laughs> and later in the show... So creepy. What is that? <laughs> I can't wait for that. I, no. Oh my god. Ah, you know how at, at uh, Disney World have you ever gone and they have the thing where you go in and you put on the headphones and it sounds like you're in the jungle? Yeah. That's what they should have for this movie. Screw 3D. They should have that sound Everyone thing. Everyone should have headphones. When oh, they go holy shit. You, you go in, you hear oh. the jungle sounds, you come out with lice. <laughs> <laughs> the headphones. We, we should come up with a movie guy's Wikipedia term for that. It's in every trailer now. Oh, it's so creepy. It's it's the uh, it's the of 2013. It's it the is. composer saying, "I'm gonna compose a score, but I'm gonna bring a DJ in to handle the last <laughs> one part of it." Where it goes. Uh, in case you were wondering what that mostly dialogueless clip was but it's from still your scary. next yeah your next the movie that's coming out soon Ugh. so we're gonna get to those uh previews it... uh -oh. oh what's this uh oh oh we must have screwed up again yes you know what that music means it means we have made an error it happens even we do it even though i think this is the first time since moving to the admiral's club that it happens am i right second time. second time, second time yeah. 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 Are you on retractions well i think yeah. it's important to admit when we've messed up because I'm sure many of you get your movie news from us, from comedians. That's a safe yeah. way to do it, I think. Well, that's why we're doing the show. <laughs> right. So I uh, first to inform, first yes. to inform. second entertain. Michael second. Donahue. He uh, Michael Donahue. Uh, do no Donahue, right? Michael Was, O Donahue. Yeah. He said that uh, we do comedy because it's a way for you to get the people to eat the cake, which is the information, which is the news. Ooh, there's cake? And the comedy is the frosting. Oh. Is that right? There's no cake. Uh, oh, Michael okay. O'Donoghue would have said that much more cruelly, so you must be quoting <laughs> Michael O'Donoghue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, an old, an old uh, yeah, yes. fight instructor we had. Michael we O'Donoghue said there's nothing cute about it. There's nothing funny about a kitten unless it strangles itself, right? <laughs> okay, are <laughs> playing with a ball of he the was, twine unless it strangles itself. I think you're, gonna, you're thinking of Donahue, the talk show host. I, Phil Donahue Phil said, Donahue. we'll be right back. Yes. I think Never that's mind, I meant there'll be cake. <laughs> well, the point is... Uh, I got the point. We're having this week's Retractions. Retractions! Yes, Paul, try as we might. Uh, we don't always hit the airways with all of our facts quite as accurate as we'd like them to be. Dear God, no. Yes, so in the name of pseudo-journalistic integrity, we'd like to set the record straight. 
All right. I think that would be best. Okay, so last week we spent a lot of time goofing on Lee Daniels the butler, and in particular Lee Daniels himself, talking mm. about the balls it took for him to put his name on the title of the movie after having directed only three movies prior to The Butler. Mm -hmm. Now, this and, is something yeah. that Scorsese yeah. doesn't even do. Uh, but then, mm -hmm. amidst all of, all of that uh, Chuck Woolery, our uh, technical director, Jamie, chimed in with this. Our tech director, let's hear what you have to say. There's a big lawsuit. Uh-oh, lawsuit, <laughs> Jamie said. Warner Brothers. Uh -oh. Somebody got sued. Warner Brothers. Somebody got sued. Lee Daniels, because he <laughs> was the butler, and Warner Brothers took him to court oh. because there was a 1918 silent movie of the Called same the time. Oh, right. She's housing us right now, by the way. Yes. Well, so um, <laughs> I remember when that happened. So she took us to- As if it was last week. <laughs> 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 So she did take us to task on yeah. the, the factual accuracy of that, and uh, there was a short film in 1916 called The Butler, produced by Sigmund Lubin, and it had the same name, obviously, The Butler. So the Motion of Picture Association America's uh, Title Registration Bureau then forced Oprah Winfrey's Butler movie to change its name. Ah, all right. Well, there we go. What did we learn? Paul, we learned don't fuck with Sigmund Lubin. <laughs> so noted. <laughs> all right. Well, we didn't make any other mistakes, did we? We couldn't possibly well, have. Unfortunately, Paul, there was one, oh. uh, another one, and, and I'm a little embarrassed to say that I myself was at the heart of this Two. one. And it's, what? Uh, as shocking as it sounds, <laughs> mm. um, and actually not so much an error as more of a regret. Mm, yes. um, so when we were talking to the open water star uh, Daniel Travis, we did oh. discuss a sequel to that shark-infested 2004 thriller, and unfortunately this happened. No, let's play a clip. Open Water 2, they made this. Have you seen They it? did make it. Uh, did I, your phone ring? Uh, <laughs> oddly, <laughs> no. Uh, no, I... Uh, it, no, really? They didn't ask you to be in Open Water 2? If, if you've seen Open Water 1, you'd know why. <laughs> open Water 1. <laughs> <laughs> now, yeah, about that, please. Yeah. Now, in addition to my That's not paying fantastic. attention at all to anything in the world, um, <laughs> <laughs> actually having seen... Open water. No, you, you, you did. We, yeah. Oh, um, Lord. And yet still, he takes the career of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, you can tell that uh, all that aside, we we did give some hints as to the fate of Daniel's character in that first film, and and as you know, it's always the movie guy's policy to announce spoiler alert whenever we're going to give any sort of information like that. And unfortunately, we regret not having done so in that particular instance. Yeah, I tried to jump in there, you know, and uh, and get on to the next part of the show as quickly as I could. But it was it was tough to distract from the spoiler bits of the business that were going on in the background. So what did we learn there? That it came out 10 years ago and you should have seen it by now? Yes, my, my point exactly. Thank <laughs> you, Adam. Right. Adam sums it up well. Thank you, Adam. Yes. yes. Now, uh, lastly, Paul, mm. uh, there is one more. Uh, after previewing Kick-Ass 2, we did discuss lead actor Aaron Johnson's name change. Mm -hmm. So apparently, after he married Sam Taylor Wood, mm -hmm. the director of the film Nowhere Boy, Johnson changed his name to Aaron Taylor Johnson, okay. taking her name into the middle of his. And last week, Paul, you were heard to say this. Okay, let's play. Ashton didn't do Ashton Kutcher Moore. Willis. No, nobody does it. Yeah. Guys, don't do it, it. except for this right. guy. And I'm wondering if he's breaking ground or if he's, you know, douchey. So, uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wonder. Well, what about that? First, you would like to apologize. I okay, uh, sure. Okay. I mean, I, 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 I said he was the first. Was I wrong? You were wrong, Paul. Uh, oh. Not only did you call him a douche, but you were wrong because he is not the first. Turns out he's not the only guy to take his wife's name. And there are actually more famous examples, uh, one of which being comedian Jay Moore. Mm -hmm. He married actress Nikki Cox and legally, although not professionally, became Jay Cox Moore, which beats the alternative Jay Moore Cox. <laughs> that, that would be unfortunate. to a different career. Uh, but more well-known, of course, is John Lennon, who legally, again, not professionally, became John Ono Levin, Lennon back in the 70s. Oh. Now, I, for one, would like to say that I find this gesture to be one of tremendous respect and honor, and uh, I just want to put it out there that, you know, I'm more than willing to take on the name Lee Love Hewitt Caius if, you know, such a need should arise. Lee? Is this whole retraction thing just a ploy for you to get Jennifer Love Hewitt to marry you? Retraction! All right, enough of that. I'm confused. I wasn't here last week. Did you discuss <laughs> Kick-Ass as well or Kick-Ass 2 as well? Kick-Ass 2? <laughs> Kick-Ass, comma, T-O-O, -O, which is a straight-to-video. Like Kick-Ass 1.5 yeah. that came out. 
step up the to record, the street. For the record, we also Aaron Johnson's a douche because he's kick ass. So he can't, he can't. It was douchey. It was a douchey, douchey. move. We're all capable. Or of was that. it? Douchey. I was also bringing or up. Was it a douchey? Super move? loving and honorable. Yeah, I said it's yeah, you. Yeah. S- I said it's a little bit of both. So you're never going to be. Uh, who, we had a friend who used to I call you. I will be Paul, Paul Lee Volpe. Love Hewitt Caius. Right, because you're. I will do it in some sort of crazy world where she's going to marry you. But uh, so what I was saying is that someone used to call you Paul Volpe, didn't they? Yeah, because they didn't know who which name was what. Yeah, yeah and they that, heard I was your husband. I didn't so. think that was douchey. But you never did. You ever discuss that? The two of you ever? No, discuss I it? never did that. I didn't even take his name. <laughs> <laughs> but was that clearly? Was that even a discussion? Was it like no. I don't care? We're both actors. We can't be screwing around with our names. Yeah. Oh, well. But listen, I want to talk okay. about one of the other inconsistencies. I guess very these romantic. people are actors too. Very yes. romantic. Look, there yeah. have been plenty of times, certainly, when two movies have come out with the same title, discussing this whole Butler thing. Oh yeah. And we're not talking about a short film nobody saw from a hundred years ago. We're talking about major releases. One example: Rush, yeah. the new Ron Howard movie coming out in September. It's not being billed as Ron Howard's Rush. Even though Jason Patrick and Jennifer Jason Lee starred in a drug culture drama called Rush just 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And seven years ago, David Cronenberg's car accident sex fantasy Crash and the Oscar-winning race drama Crash starring Sandra Bullock were coming out within seven years of each other. So there have been two kicking and screamings, two employee of the month, or two employees of the month, if you will. And one was being directed by former guest on this program, uh, Mitch Rouse, but he never rose a stink to call it Mitch Rouse's employee of the month. So what gives Hollywood? <laughs> that would yeah. have been awesome. <laughs> Attorneys general. Employees is of the month. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't, I, it doesn't make any sense. And to go back to 1918, that's the weird thing. And you know what? That like, other- oh, everybody remembers that movie from 1918. <laughs> a, a movie in which it was so old that nobody could literally say the title of the movie in the movie. My and it was grandfather a short. Up. Who My saw grandfather a short called back then? And it was a short. It was a one-reeler. <laughs> Here's the, the quintessential. On the old internet. Here's a quintessential reason they shouldn't have made us think. That movie didn't even have a poster. Fuck no, but it's got a script. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, my grandfather called up and said, Lee, the butler's coming out. I remember seeing this. It was great. We should go. And I'm like, no, Grandpa. Yeah, that's a totally different it's one. A different yeah. one. What? Oh, with, with no, black grandpa. people making their own movies. <laughs> yeah, Dad, you're old. Or Grandpa, or whatever. <laughs> Me, I'm old. He's not yeah. that old. <laughs> now, you know, despite the inconsistencies, Paul, what? the butler was not the only film that had to change its name. Oh, really? Wait a minute. Did you know? No. And I looked this up. Larry Crown... Yes. Had to change its name because of a conflict between its original title and a film from 1917 called Pitch and Woo Around the Davenport. Oh, oh. That's, that's old. Now Turned that you out, mention it, now better. that you mention it, that's the original title. I remember Turned that one. Back Anytime. when there, back when Davenport was all it was called. Yeah, now, and you, Woo was pitched, you know, wildly. <laughs> So they were going to call it that. They couldn't because of a, a really old film. Again, some of these old films, it, it, it's, it's causing chaos. You know the film One for the Money? Uh, what's oh. her face from? Uh, I know of it. Okay. <laughs> no, nobody saw it. it. <laughs> of course, granted, <laughs> right. nobody saw it. But it's a, it's a, what's her face from Grey's Anatomy, right? Yeah. Okay. And she's a detective. But originally, that film's working title was found to be the same as the silent film from 1914. So originally, they were going to call it That Philly Dick is the Bee's Knees. And they had to change it. <laughs> ah. And they went Could with you? what? What did they go with? They went with one for the money. Oh, okay. Well, that you makes know, sense. I, I would love to see the subtitles for that. Or not subtitles, but you know when the silent movies things keep coming up? It would all just be, <laughs> oh, f- woe is me. Oh, bee's knees. When I heard about that, I looked that up just to see if they were, how do you spell Philly? So it's like the same as a horse, right? Just want to put that out there. It's from Philadelphia. Yeah. But it's not it spelled is. with no, a no, PH. No, no, no. It's not spelled with a PH? No. It's, it's talking about women. Philly, yeah. that like a like, like a, a horse. Female yeah. yeah, exactly. So but comparing thought, women to horses, which was not But I thought that was spelled Pafilly. No. No, it's not? No, it's that, like, that like, fine like, Philly. Like Pfeiffer? Pfeiffer. Like a She's that a fine, fine Philly. Pfeiffer. Are there any more, Adam? <laughs> <laughs> Only one more. <laughs> oh, oh, we could go on for hours with this. Oh, well, yeah. Just to show how inconsistent you me, are, Motion Picture Academy. Me fake mentioning fake things. <laughs> uh, did you know no, tell us. that the Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants also had to change its original title because of a film made in 1911? Shut up. That film... Kinfolk of the Excursioning Dungarees. Uh. <laughs> now they were going to call it that. They had to change it. That was a little, little too on the nose, though. I think that they have a, they have an argument there. Your grandpa always wore dungarees on the Devonport. I imagine <laughs> they made a lateral move with that. Having <laughs> dungarees on can make it harder to get downstairs. But both of those are true. Wait, yeah. what do you mean downstairs? Well, if you're trying to get downstairs, you know, third base or whatever. Oh, if you're oh wearing it's dungarees. not like going down the stairs, but like we're talking about. <laughs> I thought the same thing. Well, I'm thinking of Grandpa and dungarees. <laughs> he's having trouble with the stairs no matter what he's wearing. <laughs> and he's definitely not going to third base. Not going I just Done with that. Not on the Philly. Listen, the point is, Lee, are we out of the doghouse with the retractions? 
Yes. All right, on okay. to the movie previews. <laughs> now, first up, this is where we tell you folks what's out there. Uh, the film whose trailer really makes me want to see the movie. Gods oh. be praised. Oh, yeah. That's mm. different. That's pretty good. A uh, group of well-known comedy filmmakers face the end of the world. I swear we just saw this. <laughs> True, but I still want to see this. It's the world's end. Karen? <laughs> Tired of the world not ending enough in the summer's movie offerings? <laughs> then you'll love the world's end. When did movies get such a beef against the world? What did the world ever do to them? Besides war and the melting ice caps and creating my third grade teacher who called me an idiot. <laughs> Actually, if you're looking for the earth to suck like an oblivion in Elysium, you'll have to look elsewhere because the world's end comes from the team that brought you Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz, director Edgar Wright and stars Simon Pegg and Nick Frost. Simon Pegg, you might know from J.J. Abrams' Star Trek and Mission Impossible 3 and 4, and Nick Frost, you might know him from... Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz. Is now, The World's End is the final installment in what the filmmakers call the Cornetto Trilogy. Mm -hmm. I had to look that up, too. Turns out Cornetto is a British ice cream treat, much like a drumstick. So, see how that fits into movies about zombies, <laughs> cult leaders, and aliens? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I had to look that up, too. It turns out it doesn't. It's just a goofy way to describe a trilogy. <laughs> but much like other films in the trilogy, a couple of Britwits find that all is not as it seems in uh -oh. a small town and wind up running for their lives. This time, five friends reunite in their old hometown in New Haven for a fabulous pub crawl that ends at a bar called The World's End mm. and presumably begins at a bar called The Irony's Beginning. <laughs> All seems to be going swimmingly as the group makes their way through the town, poisoning their livers, until it's soon obvious that in 20 years a lot has changed in their old stomping grounds. The video store has been turned into a coffee shop, and the record shop has been turned into an espresso bar. Okay, sorry, that's just how things have changed in my hometown. What has changed in their hometown is that the kids are worse than they've ever been. Yes. Okay, that's what's changed in everyone's hometown. Yeah, this is all the same. But these kids have glowing eyes and are out to kill them. Ooh. It turns out that New Haven has been taken over by robots at, that look like people. And since this wasn't shot in Washington, D.C., that is not normal. <laughs> All that practice fighting off soccer hooligans, they should be fine. <laughs> Chaos in the street, death at every corner. Can you tell me what makes that different from Wrigleyville on a Friday night? It's a lot like Palmdale, actually. Just mm -hmm. trade out alien robots with a blank stare for meth heads. Ah, yeah. And no one fighting back against them. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is how a zombie, alien, vampire, werewolf, demon, witch spirit, or robot apocalypse movie should be done. Lighthearted, silly, not taking itself too seriously, no teens, and with actors who have real British accents. <laughs> and if you learn nothing else, if Simon Pegg and Nick Frost show up in your town, I suggest you run. <laughs> Nothing good ever follows their arrival. <laughs> there you go. Hey! The world turns. Now, I learned something from this preview. I had no idea there were movies that had uh, perhaps spirit. I guess that would be like ghosts then? They have vampires, werewolf movies, demon movies, but demons are like devils, right? And then yeah, witch movies, hell. and then... Spirits would be ghosties. But these are robots, right? Wait, wait, are you talking about the Simon Pegg films? No, I'm just talking about films in general. I was oh. reading that huge list. I'm like, shit, there's a lot of crazy stuff there. Because they've just battled zombies, right. uh, cult yeah, in cult. Hot Fuzz, uh -huh. and then now like aliens. Yeah, but there's uh, been spirit are aliens movies, or robots? I think. Yeah, so it'd be like ghosts. <laughs> Ghostbusters. Where everybody fights go. ghosts? Well, yeah, Ghostbusters, yeah. obviously. It'll be called The Spirit. No, I just thought that was cool. That's just something. a shitty movie. No one saw it to tell us what it's about. But <laughs> I've it seen it. I it's a superhero. It. It's a comic oh, book you? movie. Yeah, uh, that's Frank Miller, right? Yeah, and okay. he directed it. And, oh, he uh, does a terrible job. Uh, <laughs> but I'll tell you what. There, I don't think there's a greater contrast in how great a movie is with the sound off and how horrible it is with the sound on. <laughs> I mean, seriously, <laughs> turn the sound off and you're just like, this looks awesome. <laughs> Even if you've seen it and know it's bad, like it's just, it's great. I have bought it because I'm just like, I'll put it on. and, and It's perfect for the airplane trip you didn't want to spend $3 on the headphones for. Yeah. So you can just watch. <laughs> the, oh, that's great. Yeah. That is glorious. <laughs> I do that I'll get time. another beer. I don't want to need to listen to this. I will, uh, I'll be going in and out of consciousness because I sleep a lot on the plane and I'll wake <laughs> up and I'll be looking at that stupid lip syncing movie. Uh, oh, pitch, pitch perfect. perfect. Pitch oh, she loves it. Sorry, Jamie. Gasp anyway, from the audience. Anyway, and I'll look and I won't have my on earphones on. Is that the movie... 
Yeah. With Gwyneth Paltrow? Oh, no. no. That's, oh, that's country strong. That would be country oh. strong. Uh, that one would work, work perfectly, too, but I like Who's to duet? figure out... It also involves lip syncing, though. And yeah. That does, yeah duet. It Don't is, because a lip syncing contest in a movie, that oh, just seems like the Huey most Lewis. awkward idea. Yeah, that's the Huey Lewis movie. That's weird, right? Right? Can it's you karaoke. compete? It, oh, that's it's karaoke. karaoke. Oh, it's not a good... Okay. You didn't do guitar. We'll get like... all this figured out before it airs. Every <laughs> <time>. <laughs> that's why we have a what research department. What I was going to say is I enjoy... Figuring out what I think is going on just as much as a real movie. That's all I was saying. Here's the in problem the... with Pitch Perfect. You slept through the best part, which is the beginning. And then it becomes uh, a contest and movie I woke up. about a cappella groups, and it's not as funny as it was early. It was funnier when was I was snarky. sleeping. Is that the one written by uh, Kay? Yeah. Cannon? Yeah. Oh. Wait, I thought Friend of the show. Pitch Perfect <laughs> was the one with Jimmy Fallon and Drew Barrymore. That one is actually like pitching a no, ball. Wait a second. Beaver pitch. Beaver oh, pitch. Oh, I was going to say, do we have another one named the same Are we thing? playing a game? <laughs> we doing that? Well, cabin fever. Is What's that the one second? I don't know. Cabin fever. Because in the fever. Isn't that the one with James Woods? I he heard. Was in? <laughs> uh, forget about it. No, I'll explain my mistake. Uh, Into the Woods is a musical by Sondheim. <laughs> Thank you. I you heard. West Side Stories lyrics. Right? I heard that in fever pitch, they lip synced all their dialogue. That's ADR, oh. isn't it? <laughs> That is funny. That was so a long way to go to get to that. Stop for that. Oh my God, who's this? <laughs> Had I, I gotten it earlier, I would have worked. Hey, hey, hey. I go. I'll go. Like I said, by the time we get all this together, <laughs> I'll go back and I'll cut and paste that in earlier. <laughs> That'd be a hilarious <laughs> joke. So world's end. <laughs> so that's all we're going to this. We're all going. I want to see course. this. Of course. Now, uh, uh, seen Shaun of the Dead? Here's yes, and here's what I'm excited yeah. about. This is that I did not see Hot Fuzz. Oh, you got to see it. I just watched it again. It's awesome. I can see this one and be too into the trilogy and still not feel like I'm behind the ball. Yeah, I mean they're not right. right? Connect- they're they're not connected, connected by so cast. No, no, I just mean to say that I feel like I could still be part of the oh, trilogy, totally. even though it's it's not like. Too Fast, Too Furious, where you're 12 into it, and you're like, oh, I'm a Who's the Asian guy? Right? Yeah. Uh, Johnny, come lately to this. <laughs> Who's the guy that drives fast? <laughs> <laughs> they're only uh, connected by the Coronetto. So you're good, because Paul yeah. told you it's ice cream. Yeah. Yeah, and it is it. a drumstick. I looked it up too. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I love it. They, they actually say that's big. three flavors of the same thing. You know, something goes weird in a small town, and it's a yeah. sci-fi connected, basically. So I just like three the fact that they talk about ice cream. And I will, okay. I will make what? you see these because you will like those. Do you see Hot Fuzz? Like Not yet. I have it on my list. Yeah, you'd you'd like you'd like Shaun of the Dead too. It's oh, real, good. It's it's as cute as it is horrifying as it is funny. As and it I'm is. finding this Simon Pegg gentleman very hot. I you and my sister, right? Karen Stein. Yeah. Bless you, Jamie. But not physically, right? You're you're completely drawn by personality. Well, right? That's oh, he's got. No, he's, here's the thing. Yeah, I work very hard smiling. on this. Yes, this. I work very hard on this. But you need some personality. I can't, I can't work on Pig personality. <laughs> could not beat you in a push-up contest. <laughs> <laughs> but that doesn't seem to be getting me anywhere with no, people like Karen. So. No, you need to make a movie about ice cream. And I need to push up zombies. my brain. You need to do what Ashton Kutcher said: be hot up here, sexy in the hair. Sexy Is in this the what head. it's become? <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning from. Chris Kutcher. Chris Kutcher. And not for nothing, I would like to shout out to the movie behind us in <laughs> yes. the movie yeah. poster. Yes. Paul. Paul is a, is a fun movie. It is so good. I yeah. couldn't believe oh, how good Lord it was. Especially it. if you're a big nerd or a movie guy. <laughs> yeah. I'll put it well, in it's, it's loaded with movie uh, references and quotes, especially the second half of the movie when it becomes mostly action. They're referencing Jaws. They're referencing Back to the Future. They're referencing uh, Aliens. All sorts of good stuff. I I'm forgot adding. before I saw it, and I forgot even up till now, that it's, it's written by Peg and Frost. It's just not directed by... Uh, yeah. um, it's that's super why that's bad. It's okay. Edgar Wright. It's directed Edgar Wright. by uh, su- uh, super bad's Greg Matola. And I do yeah. like the super bad. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, it's the just yeah, super and it's got bad. all the geek stuff down, and and yeah, it's no it, Coronetto. It, it, that's all. Yeah. No. I mean, it, this could easily be one of the same because it's aliens and it's you know. It starts in Comic Con. The movie starts in Comic Con. Yeah. So, yeah which you're is you're like shooting in Comic-Con. Vegas. It's impossible. You can't shoot in a casino. <laughs> now, like we said, we love Simon Pegg. We love Nick Frost, and there are a host of other great British actors in this film, including Martin Freeman, Paddy Considine, and Eddie yeah. Marsan, who trust me, you've seen in many, many other projects. But I want to continue the rest of the show in honor of the world's end and fire up a drinking game. <gasps> oh. Ha-ha. Oh yeah, pub crawl. Yes. This game will be dedicated to people we've never heard of. So go ahead and fire up your drinks. What we got? Open here. I wondered why you gave me this uh, cup earlier. Well, like so any good right. party, cup. Uh, we brought a sack of beer. Um, oh, fantastic. And, and red uh, party cups. All There's your best beer comes in a sack. I'm sh- I'm sad that this is an old Milwaukee. Do you remember old Milwaukee from old back east? Sk- oh, yeah. Anybody? Skinky. Anybody? Old yes. Milwaukee? Old Mil- really skunky. nasty. And peels? Old uh, style? My dad grew, grew me up on Schlitz. Schlitz! I will give you Shamil. the progression Shamil. of the beer I drank as right. a kid. Schlitz. Let me get ready. Very first thing you drank was Schlitz? Schlitz. Old Milwaukee. Mm. And then Schaefer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God. Schaefer. I had a Schaefer beer sign in my college dorm. <sighs> and you're Let such up. a drinker. <laughs> first, first beer I ever got to sip, Hams. 
Ooh, yes. Yes. Which had like a bear on it, Ham's right? For bear. no reason. Yeah, and then they got all down on like cigarettes for having camels and stuff. But the Ham's Bear was always like the funnest thing on TV. <laughs> <laughs> hey, kids, you got to wait a whole week to watch cartoons, but enjoy this commercial. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is how you play the game, all right? All so right, if you're watching or listening at home, um, okay. you can pause the showcast for a second, grab yourself a drink, and uh-huh. here's how it goes. Going forward in today's show, when you hear the name of an actor you've never heard of, <laughs> you drink. <laughs> so this is the August release simple. drinking game. Oh, perfect fantastic. for this month. We can play this again in January. And we're not yeah, even going to make totally. up names. These are real names of people no one's heard of. And this is going to be pretty easy with our next film, Good. the teenage adventure porn movie, The Mortal Instruments, City of Bones. Lee? We're going to get drunk. This, th- I'm drinking early. This is Freddie Marzon. <laughs> Stop me if you've heard this one before. Uh-huh. Smooth and kissable gothic teens <laughs> fight demons, werewolves, and vampires. Paul, Paul, you had me at Stop me if you've heard this one before. <laughs> it's beautiful creatures meets Twilight meets everything. <laughs> As a whole new group of kids find that there is a hidden world of drama and evil, and the only people who can destroy it are those in a profitable age demographic. <laughs> Lily Collins plays Clary that. Frey. Drink, drink. You don't. You, no, you don't Lily, know Collins. Lily Collins. She was I on the. Do I know she Lily was, She was, oh, she in, was the in the Julia Snow Roberts White. movie that I liked with my boyfriend uh, who played um, Prince Army Charming. Hammer. Oh, let's just. Okay, I'm gonna have a drink anyway wait, wait, wait. because mm. there were two of those Snow White movies, and I thought she was in the other one, so I'm drinking. Uh, <laughs> I'm just okay. gonna drink something about Army Hammer. It sounds familiar, but I'm not convinced. I know her so. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, on the plus side, yes. she is the daughter of Phil Collins. <laughs> I'm just going to salute that real quick. <laughs> just looking for reasons to drink at this point. Yeah. Drummy, but, if, if you remember correctly, Drummy Dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> but on the negative side, she was conceived while he was recording the song Two Hearts. Oh. Ouch. Uh, I'm going to drink on oh, that one too. Quick. too <laughs> now, when Clary witnesses a murder that nobody else sees, she realizes that she's in rural Texas. No, wait, I read that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> she realizes that there's an entire world that nobody else can see. Ah. Not even her friend Simon, played by Robert Sheehan. Okay, oh, drink, I drink, drink. Yeah. Who was that? Simon who? <clears throat> Simon's okay. a character. Okay. Who you haven't heard of either, technically, okay. if you want another drink. <laughs> it's a shadow world of demons and angels that only reveals itself to hotties, apparently. <laughs> Quick, find a hunky guy to explain it to us. <laughs> Now, it is soon revealed to Clary by a hunky shadow hunter named Jace, played by Jamie Campbell Bauer. Oh, okay. So drink. Go. drink. I, I don't think I watch You don't enough. know Jamie Campbell <laughs> Bauer. I don't watch Drink. Enough. I don't have kids. That's my problem. <laughs> you know Jamie Campbell Bauer? All right. She's right, not well, drinking. Did he, did he marry someone hear? named Campbell and then oh. took the... Oh, anyway, we'll get, we'll get into it. We'll get into it. There, drink. Take your drink. All right. Now, he apparently reveals to Clary, we don't have to drink again, uh, right. that there is a whole world that only the teens can see. Ah, uh, the internet? I... <laughs> <laughs> no, Paul, there's a whole nother New York underneath the city, and it's incredibly dangerous. Ah, uh, the subway? <laughs> okay. No, it's a whole nother New York shadow world that nobody knows about. Ah, uh, yes, and man, is she pissed when he just takes her to a goth bar in Williamsburg packed with hipsters. <laughs> Soon she learns from Jace's siblings, played by Kevin Zeggers. I'm drink. drinking. I'm drinking. On who's on who is it? Kevin Zeggers. And Jemima West. Mm. Drink. Hold on. Let me get another one here. That <sighs> she's descended from a long line of shadow hunters, including her mother, played by Lena Hetty. Oh Christ. Uh, I feel Lena like I know Hedy? that name. Yeah, who's Lena Hetty? What do I know? Three hundred. I took a I didn't oh, see that. I, do know I didn't know her. Yeah. Karen didn't. <laughs> not, not a Karen movie. <laughs> Directed by Zack Snyder. I know him. Okay. <laughs> and humanity is on the brink of <laughs> extinction again. And the only person that can save it is a cute girl again. But, yeah. And there's werewolves again. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds amazing. Well, all life as we know it is threatened, and only a teenager can save us. Oh, Lord. Gee, why do these movies always and only seem to appeal to teens? And have you ever noticed that it's only hot chicks that have greatness thrust <laughs> upon them? The dumpy girl doesn't get to save shit. No. <laughs> Based on the worldwide best-selling book series, a statistic which used to sound impressive, but now it encompasses this. <laughs> uh, to bring you and me up to yes. speed, The Mortal Instruments is a series of young adult fantasy novels written by author Cassandra Clare. Yeah, drink. Know, drink. I have no idea. Uh, now, author Cassandra Clare, who in 2007, after reading a book called Twilight, got a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> Yet another movie reminding me of how completely out of touch I am with what the teens of Generation gen, Generation what are they? Uh, generation They're Marketing Ploy. I think. They're back. Oh. What is it? Generation Marketing Ploy. <laughs> Thank you. 
<laughs> I'm out of touch with what they're into these days. <laughs> now, remember the days before 2005 when you could actually go to the movies and not see a teen vampire movie? I, I can't remember that. Uh, the good old days of nothing but Beverly Hills copses and police academies. Is, is. <laughs> Here's how I'm assuming the pitch went for this movie. Okay. <laughs> Teens, blah, 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 werewolves, blah, 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 based on a book, blah, 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 vampires, yaggity, yaggity, the underworld, blah, 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 lots of cool leather jackets, yiggity, diggity, box office. Boom! Sold! <laughs> now, never before has it been more true, the book was better. Hey, you had me at teens. <laughs> I, I like the yiggity, diggity. Yiggity, diggity, diggity. I'm getting a little lightheaded. We can't do another movie. That's a lot of drinking. That's the last movie for you. That was I a lot of drinking. Are you getting so fuzzy? A little fuzzy. I didn't eat. And you know what? Yes. No matter whether anybody likes this movie or not, no matter what it does, they're already shooting the next one. Oh, yeah. <sighs> That's the thing about it's these book series. Is, is money in hit. the bank. And it's there brilliant. Are, there are six books. Wow. Damn. I wonder if they have parents. I'd like to play their parents. their parents. It is seriously, though. These came out right after Twilight, and it was a tit for tat that she wrote these. If you watch the chronology of these being released... Yeah. I don't blame her. She's I'm just a saying. genius. <laughs> Sex sells. But yeah. this is the this is the generation that grew up watch, reading 800 page Harry Potter books. I mean, it's an incredibly literate but generation. Like, no matter what you say about it, weren't there like <laughs> four words on each page? Loves to read, but like jumbo Roy the, Clark song note. The margins. Print. The margins are the margin where print. readers keep their notes. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's where that's where they write true. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that's an old I will not see this show. movie, by the way, in case you were wondering. No, uh, I don't think I, I have no. No, it's not for us. Nope. <laughs> We're not, not allowed not to. The demographic. It, it has a fake Jennifer Love Hewitt in it, which I, on principle, will not go see. Billy Collins <laughs> can't get the, re- the, the regular Jennifer Love Hewitt's too old now. <gasps> She's too old. Isn't that crazy? Oh, That's man. insane. Not for yeah. me. Uh, the the girl that you were just talking about, um, Lily Collins, she yeah, was really cute. good in The Blind Side. He just told me today that was the oh. daughter. She was the daughter named she was great. Collins. Isn't that interesting? interesting. Huh? She was Collins really Tui. Collins Lily. One of the great last names. Uh, so Beautiful Creatures just came out like two months ago. Same shit. February, yeah. Right? D- another book series. Yeah. Same shit, different book series. Yeah. Now, did that one do well enough to justify a sequel, or are they just making the sequel no matter what on these things? But Beautiful Creatures, I don't know. Like Golden Compass, uh, which is technically called the His Dark Materials Trilogy. The first one's called The Golden Compass. They thankfully just called it Golden that Compass. Is Instead of doing title. the full Twilight Saga, breaking you know. Uh, but they made it, and it ended with her going off in the distance, ready for her next adventure. <laughs> I haven't seen a sequel. because <laughs> But your blew. point about it not being for us is so true, because I saw some uh, footage of the mortal, uh, what are they called? Instruments? The mortal bones. The mortal bones, uh, City of Gold. City of Instruments. City of Instruments. They city, were of, <laughs> city of Dr. McCoy's. <laughs> 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 they were at a mall doing like a, a meet and yeah. greet, and it was mobbed. Yeah. Kind of like, like when a, Tiffany used to go to the mall. One and Direction. I had no clue that these people even existed. Or yeah. that this I'll, novel I'll existed. I'll your reference. Like when One Direction goes to a mall. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> go, what did you say? Go here? where they are. When Tiffany used to do her Tiffany. mall tour. <laughs> Debbie Gibson's going to be here next yeah. week. Oh, uh, <laughs> I got the coconuts. She wants, she wants to come up, bring her on. <laughs> we were talking about, uh, you know, obviously these goofy for, movies. For, for. And I just want to oh, give yeah. you an update. I've seen that her naked. My, <laughs> Hello. Didn't she do a spread? I, I, I believe what Debbie she Gibson. did was called nude. <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't in Hustler. Uh, I just wanted to give an update. My brother was uh, getting movies uh, today at the Good and Plenty. What is that place called? The, Good and the Plenty. Dollar General. Dollar General. The whole... Wait, wait, wait. Time out. Time uh, yeah. out. You can rent movies at the Dollar General store? No, you can buy them. You, buy them. you buy For a dollar? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> $2 half off. $2.98 at the Dollar General. It's the $2 store where everything's Do they still yeah. have that VHS copy of the very first episode of the X-Men cartoon? Because that was just <laughs> the whole shelf in the one. Uh, I just hometown. wanted you to know Twilight has made it there. He reported that today to uh, for me. He wanted you to know. So now he's seen it. Oh, he didn't buy it. No, <laughs> no, no. He said he didn't. But what have have we seen? Let's address that in another edition of... What? 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 What did you see? What did you see this week? (laughs) We should scream as if we've been killed, because it just sounds like we're getting run over by something. (laughs) It does sound like a chainsaw at the end of that. (laughs) (laughs) I'd like to tell you what I saw this week, because I have something very special to say. I'm ready. Yes. Uh I saw The Town. Uh Uh-huh. And it was exactly the movie I thought it was going to be. Well, there you go. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not being clever For those or of you charming. Listen to past episodes. Lee always bunch of hotties. Robert sees Bank. A movie, <laughs> and he always says it's not the movie I expected. It was exactly the movie I expected, and it was exactly as good as I wanted it to be. And Adam and I were talking about this before. It's 
I want to know he how. Was dreamy. Oh, we were talking about. <laughs> don't don't bring it up in there. <laughs> I don't care if it's not his hair. Well, that's what we were saying. <laughs> is um, Ben Affleck's character is just he's a criminal. He's just a thug. He robs banks and at the end he kills people. Not giving anything away, but for some reason we're rooting for him. Well, how is it that we still end up rooting? It's because it's Ben Affleck. Is that, is the, it that because is that the, the main sign character. of character? Is that the sign of a good movie then to make you? Well, we were having this conversation. You like this night. If if you were to take the actions of that character and attribute them simply as actions, you'd say, "Well, this is a horrible human being. I would never want these things to be done to me by him, and he should pay for them." But at the whole the whole time, we're rooting for him to get away with these horrible acts. I love that. I love that. For some reason, at the end, he kills like six cops and he makes away with the money. And I'm like, "Yes, you win." No, he just killed six cops. Those have, people have families. There's, you know, but. We never saw the families on camera. This is Adam's point, which I think is what <laughs> manipulates us. Is that it's just like people being nasty to you on the internet because they're not actually seeing you. It's good directing, is what it is. Yeah. Well, I've always wondered about that. You know, in a huge James Bond fight, fight you know, the henchman. Yeah. I wonder if that guy's got a wife. He's got a kid. Wondering <laughs> where he's the guy home. The focusing that laser at James Bond. Is he? Yeah, the kid. The perfect anecdote to that is uh, anecdote something to that is antithesis uh, opposite uh, is heat. <laughs> Because you see both sides, you see the whole family of both sides. Mm -hmm. So that's a movie that because you've seen the whole family of Al Pacino, you've seen the whole family of Robert, or the whole life at least of Robert De Niro, uh, and all the criminals and stuff like that, that you're like, well, who is going to win at the end? I mean, you really don't know yeah. in that one. You know, and I just bring it up because I love, I love that that kind of m dynamic in watching a movie. Is that if you actually were to step back and analyze it for what it is, you'd say this is a horrible human being. There's no reason I should be rooting for him, but I am. And I love that that happens to you as a viewer. I'll give you two examples of that, of three actually, real quick. One, we talked about payback when we first talked about this off the air. Yes. And I looked into that because we were wondering if he's actually a bad guy. And I forgot, the poster says, get ready to root for the bad guy. Oh, geez. And, uh, but he is, the movie starts out where he's double-crossed, so you kind of root for him yeah. right away. But it's because they were all doing a bank heist. They were all going in to steal our money. So he's a bad guy. Uh, but it was great rooting for him. And the other one is the X-Men 3, The Last Stand, which kind of doesn't count, but I was rooted for Magneto that whole movie because he had the best argument about his goals. He's like, you can't change us. We're mutants. We're going to the woods, and we're going to fight back against anyone who wants to change us. I, I, how can you not get behind that? I love that. So I rooted for him. I but the one that imagine. I think is going to hit you directly is Fight Club. You root oh, for Fight Club yeah. the whole movie. You're yes, following yeah. and rooting for people who are not good people. And exactly. You would not want this happening in your hometown. Yeah. yeah. These people running around, vandalizing, blowing things. You're right. Yeah. So I thought those were true. Now, they're, they're there's a dichotomy in there with yeah. the... Spoiler. But I love that movies can do that to you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's that's why I would say directing is a confidence game because there's movies that make no sense whatsoever and we love them and they're great. Like people... I never noticed it with Batman Dark Knight. But <clears throat> a, a month after that or whatever, people did articles about the 25 inconsistencies of Batman uh, Dark Knight. And I was like... Oh, it's just because Nolan's an amazing director. I wouldn't. I didn't notice any of that. Yeah. That movie seemed to be completely <laughs> tight and make absolute sense. Yeah, you know. I mean, wait, so he, wait. Oh, and so he, like he found the fairies books, yeah, and he put the bombs on the bottom of. Wait, no, there's no way he put yeah, all those yeah. bombs on the fairies. Doesn't matter. You don't care. Yeah. You go with it because he's, because you say yeah. Nolan's great. Good segue. Uh, I uh, to I saw two movies that are in theaters: Kick Ass Two and uh, and um, Elysium or Elysium. For fast, effective relief. <laughs> uh, the 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 one I should talk about uh, because it had a cool has a little cool story to it is Kick Ass Two. Went to Kick Ass Two at the Grove, just down the street, <sighs> uh, with a friend of mine, uh, Mr. Charlie Rivkin. Uh, we we said, oh, let's go to a diner and decompress. You know, it's a, it's good after a movie. You go and you talk about the movie. And we sat down at Swingers, and right next to us was Chloe Grace Moritz, uh, Hit Girl from Kick Ass Two. Oh, that's Two. crazy! Which, Isn't that? That's so LA. This is why I love living very in this town. LA. Yeah. So let me ask Hollywood. you: Did she seem like she could kick your ass, or did she? Seem no, like, she's she seems like a little right? tiny girl. She looks yeah. like she's twelve. Yeah. I, don't she's know, I don't know how she looks so adult and kick ass too. She's playing Carrie next. Yeah. Oh, that'd they're be great. They're remaking that. They're remaking movie? Carrie. Yeah. Did that need to be? Hopefully, done? they make remake Carrie Two: The Rage. Wasn't yeah. that what that's called? <laughs> <laughs> it was. Hey, they're making Carrie the musical. I auditioned for that. Yeah. No, they made it. They made it. They're remounting. Someone thinks it should come back. Yeah, which is crazy. I was not so impressed with the Kick-Ass 2. I thought it was like no. a little much. It is so clearly missing Matthew Vaughn, Jane Goldman, Mark Strong, and Nicolas Cage. Wait, I don't know who Other one than, of those yeah. are. <laughs> 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 I heard one drink, drink. Matthew Vaughn, the director. No, Jane, I know him. Jane Goldman, yeah. the writer. Uh, drink. Wow. Uh, Mark Strong, the bad guy. Oh, wait, of course. Drink. Mark Strong's awesome. I mean, Mark Strong is fantastic. He yeah. kills everything. Uh, I mean, in terms of 
acting. And he, he new, almost kills everything and everything. And he almost he kills everything in love. Yes, you're right. He's always a, <laughs> yeah. plays Sinestro in Green Lantern. Yeah. Uh, Sinestro, drink. Drink. Uh, <laughs> and Nicolas Cage. It's it's amazing how much those two Cage characters drink. anchor that you first know. movie. Nicolas Cage and Mark Strong anchor that movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Elysium Charlotte Copley is an awesome Boba Fett. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he is the Boba Fett you want. He is such a Boba Fett, and he is a bad, bad guy. Fucking All Boba right. Fett. Moving He's on. awesome. I hope he keeps working, because uh, that's three movies He's already in, in like, another movie in coming like up. four years, so, but I mean, just keep working, dude. He's, He's in great. another movie coming up. He's yeah. awesome. And one last thing, I, Karen and uh, I saw. I saw The Graduate. Oh my God! Because oh. we put it on our list right here oh, on the yeah, show when you brought it up. The list. I check the it. check the Twitter feed. I retweeted somebody uh, posted a great EW article about the making of the Graduate. Oh, I'd like you to read gotta that. read it. Oh, very cool. So many, does Mike Nichols direct the shit out of that film or what? I mean, the, I, the first thirty minutes are just these shots like you've never seen, and it's all people coming and going. It's very much like a play. Yeah, I really like that. Isn't it that. great how the adults are just noise in a weird uh, way and stuff? Yeah. Oh, it's so I, well done. I just couldn't get it. I thought it, to me, as I kept watching it, I thought it was just becoming like a horror film. It just seems yeah, she so... She gets such control over Benjamin. Oh, it's just like mm-hmm. watching Psycho or something. Keeps the daughter from him. Damn, it was really great. Yeah, that's, yeah. that yeah. second act is just and, crazy, And too. the, um, what's her name? The lead woman was fantastic. Anne Bancroft? Her Anne friggin' Bancroft. voice and the fact that she was just uninterested in everything. Oh, she was just so sad. So how, how great is that scene after she comes on to him and you get the Mrs. Robinson you're, you're trying to... And that's not even sexy. Situation. I always thought sing, it was supposed me. to be sexy. And then, so and then she uh, says, she isn't, but then the husband comes home, and it, there's just this great yeah. scene. And the husband is just talking off yeah. his head. He just had a whole different day, yeah. and there they are with the audience, and who has the same knowledge that yeah. what just happened before. Uh, it's just and she's humor. just so doesn't care. It's yeah. just so messed up. Oh no, yeah. oh no, you're you're trying to oh. seduce me, Mrs. Robinson. <laughs> she's fantastic. I'd like to get a quick survey on the ending. Ah, oh, that's a great ending. Uh, do you have, do you have a, an, a? I didn't see it coming. Do you have a? But do you have an opinion on the look he gives Where? as to what that look means? Oh, when? Uh, in the bus, Re- regret, resent on the bus, on the back I of the don't bus, think right? Regret. I think uh, real world implications are setting in, but I don't think he. Would but regret. I love that they don't deliver it to you. They I don't love kiss. That. Yes. They don't. Totally smile. They you just you don't know if they both just made the biggest mistake in this their lives is what or the I'm greatest. Yeah. Yes. Do you I, that is brilliant. I've directly. decided that they've both realized what a screw up this move was. Oh, oh my, my god, decision. I never thought it's of that a, for a it's, second. It's a briefcase wow. with a light no. in it. Who yeah. knows? Your own interpretation. <laughs> I got a band-aid in the back of his neck. We yep. can't explain what it is. <laughs> oh, that's so crazy. No, I never thought of that at all. I never thought there'd be re- regret at all. I think that he was happy that he took a risk and it paid off. But then yeah. you would see something like mm, I don't know. Yep. I don't think so because he just the hugging or the kissing. I didn't think it was that kind of. But a that's thing. what that's I what think I love they about both that. grew up and they both were like, we just did something pretty badass. And, and I want to say one last thing: that is it. such a great moment of acting for Dustin Hoffman. That look that he gives in those two or three seconds just speaks volumes. But you're still not sure what he's saying. His first film. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Wow! Film. And he could have played the German guy in the producers. As we learned at birthdays. We learned like here that. at birthdays. And, but you say uh, I'll end it with this. You say he directed. Watch the first thirty minutes. I mean, we're here. We're talking about the last frame of that movie, and Nichols is still directing the shit out of that movie. Crazy. He sets up shots. And he just guides your eye with exactly what he wants you to see. And the script by Buck Henry and uh, whoever co-wrote it with is brilliant. And I mean, that movie's scene. fantastic. With Buck, Buck Henry, Henry's yes. pretty great. Yeah, just, are we here oh. for the affair, sir? Are you here for the affair? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, what? what? The okay. room. That was awesome. All are right, you, so are you forgetting that. something, Benjamin? Yes, yes, thank you, Mrs. Robinson. The room number, Benjamin. The room number. <laughs> she's so... Uh, she's amazing and awful all at the same time. All right, we've got one more film opening this weekend, and Ooh. we don't want you to go under-informed. So, Adam, mm. let's talk a little bit about your next. <laughs> next up, it's your next. <laughs> Uh, I am? No, no, no. The film is called Your Next. Oh, uh, the, Your Next what? No, not Your Next. Your Next. <laughs> Paul, those words sound exactly alike to me. They're m ms Homonyms. Ah, whatever. Potato, tomato. We're adorable. Here's what it's about. A nice family decides to have a reunion at a lonely house in the middle of the desolate woods. What could possibly go right? Oh, it's such a perfect day. oh shit! Ironic music cue! It's too perfect! Get out of the house! <laughs> Get out of the house! <laughs> it isn't too long before Crispian Davison, played by A.J. Bowen... Drink. No, oh, there idea. you go. Oh, Jamie started drinking. Mm-hmm. 
He sees his family's dinner interrupted when one of them is killed by a bolt from a crossbow. Oh my. Initial theories about the family of the pig they're eating take reve- taking revenge <laughs> are put to rest when serial killers show up wearing animal masks. And faster than you can say, quick, nobody call the cops. <laughs> <laughs> they're under attack by the masked madmen and the mad maskmen, played by L.C. Holt. Oh, Drink. No, no idea. Simon Barrett. Oh, crap. Are you making this up? And Lane Hughes. <laughs> oh, drink. Oh, Jesus. Mm. Oh. Oh, all right. Oh, we're going to need more beer. <laughs> Mother, I spilled it myself. <laughs> and the whole family is uh, attacked and killed one by one with a crossbow. Now, why crossbows? Another attempt from liberal Hollywood to take away our crossbow rights. That's why. Yes. <laughs> I'll tell you what, they should ban distinctive masks. <laughs> you could have stopped the purge, the strangers, and even point break with that ban in effect. <sighs> that would have been something. Now, the rest of this movie plays out like ten little Indians, or ten little indie actors, with each of them, in turn, getting what they deserve for having such a good time in the first 20 minutes of the movie. But the description of this movie sets up a nice twist that sets this movie aside from all the other cabins in the woodses. Yes. (laughs) It turns out that the last woman left standing is the last chick anyone wants to mess with as she tries to home alone the shit out of the killers. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that was the Home Alone screen. Though, yes, right? yeah. <laughs> you should have put a chainsaw on to that. <laughs> You're next. I'd be more scared if this were a film about the horrors of being a patient at the dentist's office. Oh. There you go. Yes. All right. This movie just looks like it. Uh, as there's no Moving regard on. for human life with no. this movie. This movie could be exactly The Strangers, and I'd totally go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, The Strangers is good, but man, that's another movie that just leaves you empty when it's over. This has got a connection to, uh, there's a movie on uh, Netflix right now called VHS, and it's an anthology yep. film. Yep, same director. Yeah, uh, same director, I think, is one of the segments. One of the segments. And then two of the actors, Ty West and uh, and Joe Swanberg. Drink. Which you guys drink. Can drink. Oh, I will not drink, because I know yeah. Ty West and I know Joe Swanberg. Yes. I've watched Joe Swanberg films for years you and years and years. Film. One of the... Paul's one of the, out. One of the creators of the Mumblecore movement. Joe oh, yeah. Swanberg, and then they all ended up making horror movies together. So now I'm actually kind of excited to see this. Now they're, they're calling it the, the Mumble Horror. Ah, <laughs> that's good. Yeah. Should VHS be added to my list of movies to see? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Your list? <laughs> <laughs> my list? Thank you, yes. Jamie. <laughs> VHS 2? Absolutely. <laughs> okay, Doki. Oh, yeah. Yeah, All but right. it looks, it looks uh, this movie was not <laughs> made, uh, finished in 2011, so it took a couple of years yeah. to get out. But I think it was purchased right away when it first started hitting the... Uh, the cycle of film fest and yeah. that sort of thing, you know, which they didn't have in 1916 when the Butler came out. But now they, uh, <laughs> or but when for the some original reason, it took two happened. years to get here. So I, but hopefully it's worth the wait. Well, because this right guy directed right. the VHS movies since. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. So now he's this might have been how they met, I guess. And are we know. talking about the mask in this yet? Because what I've noticed is that there seems to be a trend, or maybe not a trend, but just it seems to be a crutch to use. Because the mask that they use in this one is a as putty tat. I think it's Sylvester. They're like uh, wolves or it's, something. It's a cat, right? Yeah, aminals. It's an app. Am- they're all different animals. But they're different? Mm-hmm. I think so. I think I think so. so. Several killers. Oh, I've only seen the one. I think it's well, the pig. main poster they have is the wolf or putty tat. Is the putty tat. <laughs> why, are we, why are we calling it putty tat? <laughs> because it seems a little comical <laughs> at the same time. Well, they do. They're like In The Strangers, they had the baby doll mask. They're meant to be a little ironic and cutesy. Yeah. They're cutesy, but he's guy's got a crossbow. He's gonna but is that you. an easy way to get a, a, a scare out of somebody? That's what I'm like wondering. Mask is funny, yeah. Like if someone came in right now. Well, no. Yeah. Like, fun, um, unsettling. Out. But think about like Jason and Mike Myers. Th- those were masks, but they weren't like shockingly bizarre and twisted. Like Mung's The Scream was really weird, and and this one's really weird. Those were just ways to to you know, hide your identity. And and also with those masks, which brings up a good point, those people, uh, killers, were using chainsaws and real big kind of killy things. Killy things. And uh, they had very uh, easy, I think you could see a lot better with those masks. I don't understand how these... Tweety bird. What are you putty talking? tap mask. Yeah. yeah. The putty tap mask. How can you use a crossbow with that? Please. You're not aiming shit with that mask on. You can't see its moves and you, you yeah, sweat. The, the eyes have the little plastic no. edges that dig into you right underneath your I know, and the rubber band that always cheeks. breaks. You all these need killers a lot are going to be pissed. Yeah. Those killers just... need accuracy, and you're not getting it with putty cat <laughs> mask. No, I just think it's an easy way to get 
I got a spook. There you go. That's the next killer movie is the people with the Ben Cooper mask like we had when we were kids for, for Halloween, but it's like the Casper and the Superman oh, face. That would be scary. That would be scary. Yeah. <laughs> and then we had this creepy song working into the mix, too. The Lou Reed's Perfect Day. I know. No, nothing goes right when the song is on. No. <laughs> exactly. Well, it was uh, Renton from uh, Train Spotting is overdosing. And, uh, I think it doesn't yeah. matter what's actually <laughs> happening in your story. If that comes on, you're just screwed. You yeah. know, like, well, they've rescued Jessica from the well and she's <laughs> reuniting with the family. And so. Oh, oh she's <laughs> fucked. Could you imagine? <laughs> If you were having your wedding and you were just, if your first dance with your husband was to that, uh-huh. oh, that'd be horrible. <laughs> that was completely the wrong oh, sound effect. Anyway. And now, our first dance. Our first dance oh, as husband and wife. I love you, honey. I love you. And the father in law has a heart attack. Built for irony. <laughs> Nothing good happens in train spotting to that. Nothing good happens in this movie to that. And just I I've been listening to the lyrics all the way through. But I love it's you forever. Be. We'll be together forever. Yeah. Dope. Oh. Dope. Oh. Oh, okay. I'm <laughs> you know, honey, I've watched you grow up from a little girl and I'm very proud of you on this graduation day of yours. Oh, <laughs> it's a boy. <laughs> But there is one other sound effect we'd be remiss if we neglected to bring it up. Oh. Our favorite. <laughs> that's a new one. That's yeah, a new one. But an old favorite is there as well. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, the sound effect that makes another appearance is Bwong. Oh, the Bwong We guy. love the ah. Bwong. Are we having an interview with Bwong? We now like to bring on Bwong. Bwong, please. <laughs> but here, funny you should say that. We have an actual treat. Bwong is on the ISDN line with us. Oh. A surprise guest exclusive right here to the movie, guys. How you doing, Bwong? <laughs> Wow, I had no idea. Now, for those of you who remember Bwong from Inception, the Transformers films, and Battleship, hey, Bwong, give us a little some of your uh, your Battleship Bwong. That is good. Oh, That's now good. I know him. Go I'll ahead. stop Bwong. drinking. You, drink. you mentioned Bwong and I drank. <laughs> yeah, you know who he is. Now, Bwong has had quite the resurgence this summer, showing up in three-plus big-time oh, film trailers. He's work. He's well, remember, getting work. Remember when he was in the Purge trailer? <laughs> He, he seems like he would be typecast, you know? Well, he has to change himself not. to... No, he changes... For, well, really? Elysium, a futuristic movie, right? Uh-huh. Well, he, there he was in the trailer. Uh, I like what he did there. Uh, he He's a little understated. One, yeah. A little understated, comes in a little soft. I a like gassy that. when he played that It's one. a little gassy. <laughs> he's given the gas face. And as you heard, he's in your next. I appreciate you doing all those sound effects for us, uh, Buong. That's great. <laughs> and, and I'd like to I actually I'd like to tell the folks at home a little something. Did you know, uh, Buong? If you hang on and tell a quick story, the Buong was originally used to indicate comedy. What? what? Back when he first started, he's yeah, a really? rangy guy. Let's he's go down him. memory lane if we could. I'm gonna play some clips, uh, Buong, if you don't mind. Uh, we're gonna take a look at some of Buong's most memorable Is it comedy Kevin moments. Phillips and Buong. <laughs> well, from Blazing Saddles, you may remember. Hey, where are the white women at? Oh, I forgot and, he was in that. Yeah, <laughs> and the uh, the used to be uh, we used to work uh, a lot with the Muppets. If you, oh. you may remember that. I don't. Uh, Stadler. Yeah, uh, what? Is that it? Yes, it's over. How'd you like it? Uh, I don't know. I slept through the whole thing. Well, you didn't miss much. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> He is good. That's unsettling. He really affects He's you. rangy. Yeah. That guy's got some range. Well, there's one more. I guess I'll play one more. Do you mind, Bwong? No. All right, because Bwong appeared in Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Oh. I know it's one of our favorite movies oh, of all yeah. time. Paul, I I love that movie. Oh, well, and I cannot recall. I don't remember. Let me play the clip. Oh, this will remind stuff. Why are you holding my hand? Where's your other hand? Between two pillows. Those aren't pillows. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But after years, you can imagine Bong got overused. He became a broken punchline like Schenectady oh. or Rancho Cucamonga or. <laughs> That's right, Bong. <laughs> or like Ryan Reynolds, he says. <laughs> That's true, Bong. <laughs> but uh, 2013, Bong's going to be your year, buddy. So, uh, anyway, Riddick, Thor 2, and Ender's Game on the Horizon. I'm sure you're going to find work in trailers. So keep it up, Bong. Bong, everybody! Yay! Thanks, Bong. Thanks, Bong. Thanks, Bong.
Ooh, a grand entrance. You know, exit, I I, I'm glad you brought him in, Clara. <laughs> He's got a lot to say. All right, get sure. the hell out of here. Yeah, okay. Can't shut that yeah. guy up, man. He just... On and on. I'm, I'm glad you had him on because I, I really thought he was kind of a one trick pony, but clearly, that's this right. guy. He's got range. Yeah. He's got range. He's a character. He's got range A to, 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 to G. He's like really. Don LaFontaine. <laughs> right? right? The inner There's world a, guy. There's you know a, the guy who did Inner World? Uh, inner World. I do. I do. Inner okay, Don. Yes. But oh, I'm I know that I know one. Don LaFontaine. You're trying to make me drink? All right. All right. But that's only as a salute because he's the best he, in his business. He's left the moral coil. It's true. Right? Okay. It's true. All and Blong is the best in his business, if you ask me. I don't know. Guy's coming up, man. But that's not. But speaking of special guests, we're going to be right back with the one who's actually a person. And unless you thought this show was done, there's more show. Yes, Bill Cott will be here right after this break. Well, to us, it's a break. To you, it's like ten seconds of music. Here we go. Welcome back to the Movie Showcast, everybody. We are in our special guest segment, and this week we have a very funny guy joining us. He's an alumni of the Second City and uh, in Chicago, and a Midwest guy at heart, hailing from St. Louis. He's appeared on TV, film, commercials, and more. Projects like The Ringer, The Wizards of Waverly Place, The Dana Carvey Show, and probably most notably from his many appearances at the Improv Orgy Wednesday nights in yeah. Western Chicago. <laughs> Bill Codd, everybody! Yeah. Bill Codd. Thank you. God bless you. Yes, the improv orgy was a thing. It was a late night thing. It, that's the thing about Chicago, if you've never been there. Uh, improv nights pop up everywhere. everywhere. True? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. See, well, what I was, the, at the time that I was hosting the improv orgy, which was just an all night improv jam and like f- free and cheap booze a thon fest, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I was hosting that on Tuesdays, then Wednesday, comedy sports rehearsal. Then I'd like hang out with my friends over at IO on Thursdays. Um, Fridays, uh, comedy sports show. Saturdays, comedy sports show. Sundays, Second City classes. Uh, and then um, Mondays, I think was my night off. I'd watch Roseanne. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then back Taking to a the night grind. Off from comedy. Okay. <laughs> oh. So, in this, and every show full of people, right? Oh, uh, the uh, the, Just, the that, there's room for all that's that because in it's Chicago. Chicago. Oh yeah. yeah, there's all different audiences for every single thing, different uh, project. What was great about the uh, the improv orgy was there was all the <laughs> improvisers who were coming out to get a little bit of stage time, yep. but then there were like the neighborhood guys, like this guy Bert, who just go, <laughs> "Yeah, I got a suggestion for you. How about you shut up?" Yeah, I saying, know Bert. Bert? Yep. You know Bert? I I'm pretty sure when you did that impression, you said Bert. <laughs> And I, uh, Schadenfreude, uh, uh, <laughs> last couple of years have done a uh, improv show at a bar in uh, in uh, around Bucktown area. Okay, that's where it's, it is. That's and, Bert. Yeah. yeah, Bert would like interrupt scenes between wait, me wait, and Rich Tellerico to say, you know what? I'm gonna call you uh, soft boiled egg guy, <laughs> and I'm gonna call you potato guy. <laughs> Is that what the improv orgy was? Is yeah. that, uh, that that bar? Oh, God, I can't even think of the name of it right I now. I couldn't either. It was killing me. I would have, I would have is given that, you the Is that intro. where we did the, the improv, improv wrestling federation? Oh, no. no. That was no. playground. Okay. Wasn't that was it? playground. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. That was playground. That was fun. Yeah. Which is another The owner, place. Kenny, used to hang out at Ale House after, after he'd closed down his place. I can't remember the name of his place anymore, though. I know. It's a sh- we'll have to go back. Yeah. Chattenford's done like 20 shows there. God, I can't it's think like of the name. It's like The Village? Paul, no. you have internet on that computer. I looked it up earlier today. Uh, I, can't, yeah, I can't find all these old places. <laughs> but. I'm the stupid one here. <laughs> Jamie? Yeah. Gallery yeah. Cabaret. Yeah. Bert, the Gallery Cabaret. Bert Gallery. Chicago Bar. Gallery, Gallery Cabaret. Gallery Cabaret. Yes, yes, this is yeah. the same yeah. Bert. And they would have art on the walls they're trying to sell, too. Yes, yes. And we brought him on stage so many times because he's just this wonderful random element. Yes, Bert. Yep. Wow. He won't mm. not be there, so you got to bring him into the show. <laughs> Isn't it amazing that two That's people know the same so Bert, the, the same, same Bert. drunk? <laughs> it's so funny. At some point, Schadenfreude also brought in Alderman Bert Nataris, who was a, a no. retired alderman as a character in the shows too. And we realized we had become a two Bert comedy troupe. <laughs> <laughs> and I should mention, if you don't know, Adam has a comedy troupe called Schadenfreude, which he's been with for over 10 plus years, right? Yeah, yeah. More than that, 15, 15 maybe, yeah. a long time. So check out schadenfreude.net for we're, wacky stuff with we're that. We're a two Bert and, <laughs> and their <a> comedy <laughs> troupe. Check two Berts.com. You'll find Schadenfreude comes right up. <laughs> it's a big deal. Uh, but you're kind of keeping the whole 
in, open improv stage thing going here yeah, in LA. I've always been a huge believer of improv jams, and there's a lot of ways to make money off of improvisers, but the one that's just about improv is the improv jam. Free to attend, improvisers show up like an open mic, and, you know, that's, I kind of like discovered that whole concept in Chicago do, when, you know, I discovered Eight Degrees Below Normal doing the... Like Eight the, Degrees Below Normal! Mike yeah. Shreeman! Oh, oh my God! Melissa, was that her name? Yeah. Yeah. Jeez, that's so amazing. Now, are there... And Glenn uh, Bretner. Glenn Bretner. Yeah. Oh, my God. Improv Phil open. Phil Aaronsberg, who I'm sure uh, will listen to this if he knows that we're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make sure of that. All right. Oh, that's so cool. Now, does Los Angeles have anything like that where you can just go and improvise and just uh, like an open I think mic? There's, I, think there's, I think there's jams at, at, at I.O. There used to be jams at Bang, and there's definitely a jam every Tuesday in Pasadena at Hutch's Barbecue. Go to that. That's cool. All right. Well, you guys know the I website. Need improv time. Well, what? You guys know the website. All right. www.theimprovtrick.com. There you there go. You go. All but, right. uh, Plug yeah. away. I'm learning. Yeah. Because no, these things are or these things are amazing, especially back because we were in Chicago. We were studying at Second City, <laughs> and you wonder outside of class, where can I get on my feet to do we to try this stuff out? And it's these improv jams that have the best atmosphere because there's like no judgment. You can go up there and fail, fail matter. miserably yeah. and hugely and wonderfully. And, you know, take risks, and, and it's a kind of a no-risk room. And mm-hmm. that's key for when you're trying to learn all this stuff. Or if you're like us, who've been doing improv forever, but not specifically in a while, mm-hmm. go back and uh, get our feet wet. So, yeah, I think we should go and do that. Because and everyone listening. Yay. Yes, everyone come out. How do you, important do you think improv is in the careers of, like, film and TV actors? Oh, I think incredibly important. Um, the Just, you know, my most recent, like, you know, the I guess – biggest like long running project I've done in the past few years was uh, Wizards of Waverly Place and uh there was so much improv going on you know like really? uh, and, and it was they, they were very they were very open to in rehearsals me at, um you know like playing around and adding some extra cowboy language to it and a lot of times it actually wound up in the script um, What do you play on the show? Uh, I played a principal who is uh principal uh, Herschel Larry Tate uh, actually named after Herschel Larry Tate. Yes, uh, <laughs> named after Larry Tate from uh, Bewitched. Nice. <laughs> so he, he was kind of clueless about the kids that were. I was just thinking of this the other day. I was like, you know what? As you guys were talking earlier about all these uh, witchcraft, war, you know, uh, warlock, wolf, and wolfman instruments, and, and... Uh, Dracula. Yeah, I was like, gee, I've had enough of these teen witch and warlock. <laughs> Wait a minute, that's still paying my bills. Exactly. <laughs> I, I didn't that's even realize exactly. because my portions of it were always like the. I hope you're not going to be late to the big game. So and I like never experienced <laughs> except for like you know, uh, oops, tangentially like you know like paint being splashed on me and stuff like that. So I still don't when I think go go back and think of it. I don't think of it as that genre of a show, but it's definitely. In that whole teen um, necromancy, <laughs> Selena Gomez, right? Yes, and, but she never yeah. was spearing anybody through the heart, you know, in an um, attempt to stop the Dark Lords from taking over Waverly Place. I think she helped slay some dark angels. Oh, oh. yeah. Well, there you go. And killed some zombies. Certainly, well, of course. And I was turned into a zombie <gasps> for an episode. How fun is that? It was. That'd it was really cool. cool. I Did didn't they do anything getting... with your eyes? Did they give you any eyes? Uh, no, I was hoping they would get the eye things. Yeah. Uh, but they were putting on the makeup, and then I, I didn't think to get a picture until, like, later on. David Deloise showed me a picture. He was coming by while I was uh, eating my lunch. Oh, and I just ha- I had to, like, sit outside, and I couldn't take off the makeup and take off the clothes or anything. So I'm sitting there trying to eat without getting anything <laughs> on my clothes. Uh, and he got a nice shot of me That's... shoveling food into my mouth <laughs> as a zombie. So they actually had to put makeup on you to be a zombie. Oh, yes. Okay, because we had a guest who was an ogre, and all they did is took the shine off his forehead. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Uh, good old Dave Maddie. Dave Maddie. Yeah, well, he's like 6'10". He's an yeah. ogre. Yeah. Here's your ogre makeup, Pat. <laughs> and improv was cool under the great uh, Disney watchful eye. It's, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, well, yeah I think they'd be more... Well, it was welcome, because uh, uh, Peter Marietta was was one of the exec producers, and I, I knew him from... Uh, from Second City, and he was he was always encouraging me. Hey, yeah, 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 well, we'll try it this way, and then come on and say it this way, and and then uh, give us another take, whatever you want. And I'd be like, whatever you want, why? Thank you. Uh, and I had a chance a lot, um, just so I can get back on topic of movies. Uh, in the Ringer, um, we had a big, big opportunity to improvise. Because and, and yeah. just to back up, the ringer you play, uh, the ringer is Johnny yeah. Knoxville uh, infiltrates a, uh, a special Olympics, a special Olympics yep. pertaining to be special, and you are one of the special 
Yep. Olympians. Olympians. Yes. Yeah, I play Thomas. Did we word all that right? I think so. <laughs> you did. <laughs> Were you politically yeah. correct? Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm pretty you uncomfortable did. no matter what, <laughs> how you word that. There's but, okay. no you good way to get into this topic. You did not crush a single eggshell. You yeah. did yeah. wonder. <laughs> Um, I, I actually, uh, I, I've gotten a lot uh, very involved with Special Olympics since then because there's... Because you're uh, guilty. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think there was, there, there was a point uh, until I had been like exposed to the whole world of Special Olympics that I had been kind of uh, uh, guilty of, of maybe using, you know, what's referred to as the R word. Yeah. Um, but for the first time ever, I was just watching Hemlock Grove. Speaking of um, spooky teen things, watching that last night. And for the first time on a show, I actually had somebody address the fact that it's not, you know, the most sensitive thing in the world to call someone a retard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. No, so it, I'm and, an Eli Roth TV show. I'm surprised. That, there you go. <laughs> Strides are definitely being made. Politically correct. <laughs> yeah. I'm an Eli Roth TV Eli show. Eli Roth, I'm going to drink. I'm so gonna there's, there's, a, there's a Can cool I, Yeah, let me... Uh, <laughs> Man, I would get hammered if I played that game. I never, I never know. And I'm, I, I love movies, but probably not as much as you guys, because uh, you, you know, you focus on it with this show, which is awesome. Sign. I, I don't know. I, I can't profess we to remember all the names of, of, of everybody of every uh, show I've ever seen. But I'm horrible with the cast of any movie. Like yeah. you know, like I should probably know everybody yes. on there except yeah. for. But all I know is Nicolas Cage. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the movie. I like okay. Oh, that one guy. He's he's well. Christopher he Mintz was, Blast. He was Christopher Blast till he married uh, something something Mintz. Right? Oh yeah, <laughs> Molly Mintz. Yeah. Molly Mintz. It's one of those wonderful it, name merging. Yeah. 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 So I, a question I have about the yeah. Ringer. There's a core yeah. group that you're in with Johnny Knoxville, and there's maybe two or three other guys that that are kind of the main yeah. cast. Uh, how many of them were actually uh, um, special Olympians? Special or was special of, of like the core core group of guys. The 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 two guys who had um, um, there's so many different you know right words for it. Um, I, I uh, a term that a lot of people like to use is intellectual disability. Yeah. Or, or I got um, that. <laughs> or intellectually challenged. I am intellectually disabled. Normally. Um, usually because special Olympians go, see, intellectual. It's intellectual. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, I, I'm i sorry. It's not, <laughs> I didn't write the script. Ricky Blit, Ricky Blit wrote the script. Um, anyway... Uh, yeah, that that was a great experience for me. But uh, getting back to the to the improv uh, uh, part of what we were talking about with that, um, one of everybody's favorite lines, uh, Jeff Arend, who was also in Super Troopers, um, uh, the guy who played, um, oh gosh, I can't remember his character's name in the Ringer now. See, that's how bad I am with names. <laughs> you can I drink on that one? Um, but the when 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 the Fuck, can I say that on this oh, show? Yeah. Sure, okay. Yeah. My mom won't n- let me, though. You can't say uh, the R word, but you can say fuck. I just sure. realized we haven't cursed this entire show. Go yes, for you it. Have. Yes, we have. <laughs> yes, you <laughs> have. Yes, you have. I was asking whether oh. I could or not. You're immune. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm so immune, I guess. <laughs> yeah. You've come off the other side. Well, <laughs> Bill thinks there's a rule just I think for you guests, said, aren't. I believe, I believe you said, and sorry any of my fans at home who are underage, but holy motherfucking balls. I think, <laughs> I, I think yeah, that's, that's what us. you said earlier. That's us. That sounds like us. Let me check yeah. the script. Oh, yes, there it is. Holy motherfucking balls. <laughs> I wondered about that. Do you have a whole new group of, of fans from uh, Disney now? Who, who yeah, look at you? I do. I get when, when me and my wife uh, Samantha, and we we love going to Disney. Um, she has a little game where um, she she likes to collect the the pins, the collector pins. Oh yes, the, the pin collecting big. She gets one every time somebody asks to take a picture with me. Oh, oh wow! So, so she's got a, a huge uh, a bevy. Yeah, <laughs> no, because I'm broke and I haven't bought her the ones that I owe her. <laughs> You're so, in Dutch with the wife for pins. So the recognition factor really ain't paying off. <laughs> Karen and I used to work on the cruise line for uh-huh. Disney because oh, we went up great. with John Sweeney. I don't know if you know the whole time that yeah, the Brave yeah. New Workshop had mm-hmm. contracts yeah. out there for improv, and uh, that's right when they started that, right yes. around the millennium. And uh, and I can only imagine how many pins there are now. That is a crazy, crazy. F- fanatical mm-hmm. obsession people have, collecting these Disney pins. One yeah. for each ride, one for each movie, one for each TV show, one for each character. There's a bazillion of them. Do you wow. have one for your character? Um, I don't know if there is one. I wonder. I wonder. Do you have to pay to get into Disney? Uh, of course I do. Yeah. What? Yep. Ah, yep. That is cheap. Really? I saw Dave Foley in there, and he had one of the VIP guys with the plaid vests around. I'm not sure he didn't pay. He's being walked around by one of the <laughs> VIP guys. No, he probably paid he for the VIP paid. tour. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't think they... Uh... That's Flick. He's the voice of Flick. Ah, all right, <laughs> fine. So be it. 
Uh, do you have a Second City Idol? Oh, that, wow. you know, that you Second City Idol. I would watched? say John Candy. You know, or if you're talking about the one that I watched on the stage. Yeah, who was your crew when you got to Chicago? Wow. Who was my, on main stage? My first uh, main stage show... I think was Truth, Justice, or the American Way. I remember that show well. Um, so that would have been... Um, mm, it's a great uh, title. Yes. Mike McCarthy. Yep. Um, Fran. Uh, John Rabano. Yep. Fran, That's Ruthie. Um, who else? I thought Carell was in that show. Yeah, yeah. Steve, yeah Steve Carell was in that show. Um, and that was right. That was like right, right before um, Scott Allman, probably. Yep. No, Scott Allman was still in in ETC with uh, Jackie Hoffman, Stephen Colbert, Jackie and Hoffman. yeah. That place this is always a wealth of just an, uh, oh. immense yeah. talent. Yeah, it's the best. Yeah, you can go in there, just pull a couple of people out, and you're good to go. Mm-hmm. You know, no matter what it is. Yeah. Oh, and Ian Gomez and Dave Rosowski were also in that. That. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, that and ETC this is, makes a good uh, segue to the Dana Carvey show because now, now the first time we went to go, uh, me and my friends, my improv troupe from uh, Miami University went to go to Chicago. You know, you're seeing these people. Obviously, none of them are famous yet, but you're like Second City. This is this place where all these people came from. And so then, is after the shows in the first shows we saw were also some of those people, mm-hmm. Scott Allman, uh, you know, Steve Carell, and and then at various other times, I remember you know, Mitch Rouse and uh, uh, Amy Sedaris. And but then then once you started to see seeing them filter into pop culture you're like oh there's oh there's like oh there's a sighting you know in pop culture yeah. of one of the people from main stage and so you were in the Dana Carvey show and that was the first sighting in pop culture for a lot of us mm-hmm. although maybe Exit 57 was before that yeah mm-hmm. it was okay well that well yeah, that was a big so one too you're like holy i mean that's like the whole main stage i saw yeah. the show but but then after that it was i mean the fact that Steve Carell and Stephen Colbert were on the Dana Carvey show nice casting from that show and you were in it as well yeah yeah that was that was like like my my like second or third professional job, I guess, other than Second That's City. Cool. And yeah. how'd you get cast? Out of Chicago or out of oh, New York wow. or out of here? That's a long story. If we have time for it, yeah, go for it. Um, I was actually I was on the road um, and with Second City Tour Co, and we were doing a, a tour of the the East Coast, somewhere near Jamestown. I'm oh, sure. Oh, I'm sure. Yes, <laughs> they did and, comedy there. <laughs> um, and uh, and I got a call from a friend uh, uh, from an from an agent, um, uh, Mike August, who was working for uh, William Morris at the time, and he was a good friend of mine uh, of of uh, Todd Grove, and Todd Grove had managed Catch a Rising Star uh, Comedy Club in oh. St. Louis. So he had, he had called um, Mike because he had seen me understudying main stage uh, in Pinata Full of Bees in, oh. in, in oh, Adam so McKay's cute. role. Which was an honor to Best to be in that show. show These are ever. fifty dollars socks. <laughs> only show I missed. Ugh. Oh, it's the best <laughs> oh show no! Ever. Are you kidding? Oh, in ten oh, years, it's the only. God. They have one of those friggin' pig masks on. He's running right with the drum, just like in that freaking movie. That's Karen Sullivan. Everybody's blockbuster cards, and that yeah. actually took them down. I claimed <laughs> they're, my. They're not here anymore. Dude, Second city is. I claimed is. my bounty right along with yeah, them. Yeah, for anybody listening who doesn't know, at the end oh. of the show, they proclaimed. They claimed. They, the they took everybody's blockbuster card from the audience and. And cut them in half. And we were there the night, and they actually <laughs> held it up and said, Paul Preston claims his bounty. And we were like, this is us. Oh, that's right. They would read people's names. Yeah, it was out. random, and we were picked. That's Radical cool. show. So, yeah, so he had, he had seen me in that show and said, hey, you really ought to see him. Um, uh, he had seen me, you know, kind of mature as a performer from being, like, right out of college to that point. Uh, and so Mike said, I'd really like to see it. I was like, yeah, next time I'm in New York. And everybody was like, you're going to be in New York tomorrow. <laughs> so, so, so we kind of like, we, we had an extra day on our trip, delayed it. Uh, I met with him and he told me that he had sent in my tape for, uh, or, or he, no, he said he had, he had submitted me, uh, but didn't have a tape or anything like that. And he says, you need to get a tape together. I was like, okay. So I put together, uh, um, a thing of two, like, um, uh, uh, corporate industrials that I had done and somebody had cut together for me <laughs> oh and threw it into there and uh, and they said okay great we want to see and I was like well, gr- well once again I'm on the road and I can't and then all of a sudden I got booked on a, on a, a corporate a th- thing that was being broadcast in house from sh- from New York and they were flying me to New York the day that they wanted to oh see me for that so it I got seen for that happen. it was going to happen if you liked it or not I, 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 I think it was <laughs> yeah. forced on me wow yeah. that's so awesome so uh so that would that's the twisted tale of how and of course there's plenty of side stories of that but that's that's the twisted tale of of how I wound up in the room in the first place and then the reason I got the job was because I had auditioned for Saturday Night Live 
the year previous and didn't get it because I was doing my impression of Jackie Gleason taking a difficult crap. <laughs> <laughs> and, and may we? <laughs> I, I haven't in years. <laughs> I don't know if I... It might be too hot. Uh, yeah, it is. Um, I, I'll do it some other time. With, with, with that sort of emphasis put on it, it sounds like, oh, wow, it's this hilarious thing. And it's... Mm-hmm. Actually, the fact that it's so dumb is what—it's a good it title, actually, yeah. for a bit. So I'll keep. I'll go with so that. So we would do that blackout. We just say that, and then you see me do the impression, and then lights out. Uh, we're just like, mm. <laughs> 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 That's basically all. That's all. That's all. That's all. That's all. That's for me. I'm happy by that. So oh I'll sleep God. well. Robert Smigel had seen oh. me do that in that audition, and he said I was laughing so hard because a I thought it was a funny idea, and b I knew how much Lauren was hating it. <laughs> um, and, and 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 up to that point in that audition, it, things had been going great, and then and then I did that, and then it was just like. <laughs> And then I finished up with a song, and halfway through, I, I like I dropped the lyrics in my head. I was like, "Oh, can I start that again?" And then in the back of my head, I was like, "How's that gonna happen on live TV, Bill? How's that gonna happen?" <laughs> and so I went and cried in a sink. I've been there. I wanted to mention you there. brought up Smigel. I wanted to talk about him because yeah. he he's never out in front of the camera. Well, I mean, rarely. I don't think I've ever seen him in front of the camera if he's made a, a, a jump out You've there. You've seen him in plenty of things. You probably weren't aware of it was Exactly. Him. So what, he's a genius. Yeah. So what? It, do you have to sign a thing to say, don't explain what he's like because I don't know what he's like. And I think he's a genius. <laughs> and no one says what he's like. No one says what he's like. And and everybody I, he's worked like this, with him. He's like this J.D. And... Salinger-esque hermit genius who you just don't... Uh, I Is that true? He He has like a magical way of coming up with... Getting straight to, especially topical humor, what is funny about a situation, and then finding the part of it that nobody else thinks of. Um, Like, you know, uh, uh, on the Dana Carvey show, um, just, you know, um, there was a whole thing about uh, NBA football. Or not N- NBA football. Yeah, great. That, he is uh, funny. That's brilliant. NBA. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Who could have thought of NBA football? <laughs> Tall guys playing no. football. Uh, but but he had written this thing where it was like me and him and somebody else as like referees. And we were running around as tiny little referees and these giant uh, towering basketball players over us. Um, just, just the visual humor. He seems to like attack like the broadest thing about what's funny and then like do it in an intelligent way and yet still reveal it as dumb. It's like a double dumb reveal. That he's a genius. For at. anybody who doesn't, who doesn't know, Robert Smigel, the voice of uh, Triumph the Insult Comet Dog. Yeah. yeah. And mm-hmm. one of the original writers of Conan who crafted uh, a lot of Conan early on, right? Yeah. He did all, yeah. The, Saturday Night Live. all, all the all the lip work, all the clutch cargo mouth on. Yeah, I love that's clutch cargo. Yeah, TV fun house, the whole thing. Oh. Now, uh, on the Danny Carvey show, mm-hmm. they were notorious from what I remember, because I, I, we had mentioned that we looked up online one of the clips that mm-hmm. you were in. But since. Last night, I hadn't seen it since it aired on television, and I, all I remember is every week it was a struggle to stay on the air because all you would do is insult the uh, the uh, sponsors of the show. True, and all a goof was everybody in on it, or were you every week going, "Wow, you keep insulting the produ- the and sponsors were, of the show"? I won't be on the show anymore. This is my first job. But these were, these were live spots. You had to do the sponsor spots on air, right? So you're uh, insulting them, lo- like <laughs> well, not not live. It was, it was I mean, not t- live, it was taped, but it was taped the week of. Here was the thing. Um, you see, you you mentioned earlier you'd seen the Mountain Dew thing. Yes. Um. So uh, what I heard later about the client, and and the the joke is, is that it looks like pee. You know. <laughs> And so there's this whole bit between me and Which Dana. Which is odd because and that's their slogan now. And so it, it worked out for them in the long run. Uh, but the, one of the clients um, said, like, off the record, you know, like, hey, we know what the joke is here, and we think it's funny. Um, so, so in that case, it was all right. I think a lot of the reaction was overblown in an attempt to push some extra press on it. Yeah. Because I think some mistakes were, were made in, in trying to present it to America. Uh, because it was like when, when like... Uh, you know, ABC Disney had just acquired the Muppets, and they had a they had like cut together a picture of Dana Carvey with like Kermit the Frog with his arm over his shoulder and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And it's like you're setting it up to be that, and then it's like Clinton breastfeeding puppies. Yeah. It was not it was that. not a smart idea to uh, to market it the way they had. So I think they thought, oh, we could take this controversy and try to like maybe get some more publicity out of it that way. But I don't think I really don't think anybody was genuinely offended 
except O.J. Simpson about any of the... It's okay. It doesn't matter if he's offended, really. It doesn't. No. But the sketch is you and Dana Carvey sitting at a booth with a can of Mountain Dew yeah. and a uh, cup of Mountain Dew, and Dana Carvey just says six or seven times, what does that look like? <laughs> nice, refreshing springtime in a glass. <laughs> no. no. What, what does, does that, that look, look like? like? Liquid sunshine. <laughs> That's awesome. And so you went through all those different sponsors, Taco Bell, right? They, they. Yeah, it start, there. started out as the Taco Bell Dana Carvey show, and then it was the um, the Pepsi Dana the Carvey show, comedy hour. and then it was the Diet Pepsi <laughs> Dana Diet Carvey Pepsi. show, the Mug Root Beer Dana Carvey show, the um, the the Szechuan Dynasty <laughs> Dana Carvey show, and finally the Mike will teach you guitar or something like that. <laughs> And they had, you know, they always had like the, the like, you know, the men from Texaco sort of dancers out at the front. Uh, in that one, they had like dancers like pulling off little tags of like phone numbers from the Mike Will Teach You Guitar big flyer. Oh, above awesome. them. It was fun. Where is Carvey? Let's get him, let's get the, give the guy get another TV show. show. Oh, get yes. him on this show. Every time he right makes an appearance on a, on a so talk funny. show, it's like, he's hilarious. And I saw him up at the Lovitz Club. He made a deal hilarious. with the devil. He looks awesome. Yeah. Yeah, That's that weird. too. Yeah. Yeah, right. yeah, kind of him and Martin Short look amazing. Timeless. Mm-hmm. Well, he got a new heart, right? Dana Carvey got I think that's heart. why he took a couple years yeah. off. He had oh, heart surgery right? he or something. Awesome. Well, he had a something. surgery that somebody botched, and then he got oh. a baboon heart. I'm making most of this up. <laughs> <laughs> but there, there, there was somebody who made a mistake, so it made it yeah. made, it made it look as, as if he had spent all this time in the hospital, when really it was the doctor who had messed up. <gasps> And so, you know, you know how this town goes with rumors. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was still Next in very thing you know, good you health. you got some guy claiming he's got is. a baboon heart. Yeah. You know, right? That's, you know, <laughs> just how it happens. All that monkey business. No. <laughs> 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 this grinding <laughs> stop in the show brought to you by me. <laughs> hey, I actually... can't wait to tell everyone in my hometown about you being on the show. They're going to be so yes. excited. Explain oh, what that cool. is real quick, honey. Yeah. Oh, I'm from Jamestown, New York. It's a very small little town, but it's where Lucille Ball is from. And so I have friends and family there. And one time I went back and they're all excited to tell me about this amazing comedian who had come to town. And they're like, he's this improv genius and he's been on TV. And I'm like, oh, my God, he sounds awesome. Who is it? And they're like, Bill Cott. And I'm like, the improv. Where'd you Bill Cott? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, he's pretty cool. But it explain was... the Lucille Ball connection, right? Because uh, uh, Bill, yes. Bill was... Uh... You'll have to take over on that one. Well, a couple of years ago, yeah. I auditioned for... Um, they were trying to, to get the idea off the ground. Uh, I Love Lucy, live on stage. Uh, a musical based on I Love Lucy. Um, and they put lyrics too. Da, 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 da. There were always lyrics to that. There are. Oh, there are? Yeah. Lucy oh, really? and she loves me. <laughs> we're as happy <laughs> as two can, can be. Sometimes <laughs> we quarrel, but then <laughs> how we love making <laughs> up again. When Lucy you're a child kisses. in Jamestown, you learn that. <laughs> <laughs> Those <laughs> lyrics are so much more exciting than suicide is painless. Go ahead. <laughs> 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 and they're both suicide inducing. Yes. Uh, and but so how I was they make fed up Mertz. from twin beds. That's what I want to know. Picky, picky, picky. <laughs> That's another thing. If you're from Jamestown, you understand there's twin beds. Twin beds. Yes. Well, so Lucy, continue. Right. And Lucy, Lucy had twin beds. Yeah. 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 yeah okay. It was a fifties. Yeah. Like. It was a fifties. Can't be. Kinsey good. hadn't done shit yet. <laughs> did, the, did the Cunningham share a bed? We never I don't think we ever saw their bedroom. Better. There, there were m- most of the fifties beds didn't have the twin bedroom. It was a race issue mm. for the two of them because he was Cuban <gasps> and Cuban. she was Irish. Oh, interesting. They were racist in the fifties. Christ, 50s? we were uptight. Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Again, she's from Jamestown, New York. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> so yeah. anyway, the, the south of the north. Sorry. We have so, yet to connect Bill to this entire so thing. I, <laughs> I was Us performing on a as as Fred. <laughs> As Fred Mertz in I Love Lucy Live on stage. Which would be um, awesome. And so they found out about that. That's and then great. for the 100th anniversary, um, uh, Diane Vincent, who is like the official Lucy, uh, you know, with the, you know, uh, official imprimatur of, of uh, you know, uh, Lucy She's been Arnaz. sanctioned. Yes. 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 Um, she's awesome. And she is amazing and she's a wonderful woman. And, and she uh, was friends and still is, of course, friends with uh, Rick Sparks, who, who was directing uh, I love Lucy live on stage, and she said, "We need a Fred Mertz, but it's so hard to find." One. And he's like, "Have I got a Fred Mertz for you?" <laughs> so uh, I met with her, and um, she seemed really nice, and she told me about what was going on in Jamestown, and I said, "I'd love to be a part of that." So um, I did that for two years in a row, and hopefully, I get a chance to come back there again sometime soon. Oh, cool! Yeah. Well, before uh, 
let's see, before we get too far into this, I have a couple of questions. It's a little something that we like to call five questions for other guests. Okay. okay so these are questions so for these some are other people, guests. Yes. yes. But since and I have here, to, do I have to guess who the other guest was? No, that could be a bonus. Question. I first, may need a drink. But first, <laughs> please answer the questions. Right. We wrote these questions over. for guests who ended up not being here okay. this week. So. Yes, right. anyway. but we put them to you. So, Bill, can I ask right. you? Sure. How do you feel about being banned from baseball for 211 games, the longest non-lifetime suspension in Major League Baseball? I think I had it coming to me for all the, <laughs> all the junk I put inside my body, starting with Twinkies uh, and, and ending with, uh, with Red Bull. Now, Twinkies are back. This is going to be more bad news. They are. Oh, did you see on the on the package that it's like, read the sweetest comeback story of all time. Hey, uh, none of us, I think, have gotten a new Twinkie. They're not good. They're oh. not as moist. I'm going to no? I'm gonna put it out there. Oh. <laughs> You've there done are, the research. Well, there you go. I like how we were decrying the loss of the Twinkie. There are 12 fake Twinkies. There's the fake, uh, I mean, there's uh, every, it, there's the, the right, right, little yeah. Debbie makes a fake Twinkie, and uh, then there's the Zingers, and the, I mean, there's, have you seen the Zinger? Good. I think Dolly Madison went under. Really? I haven't seen a Zinger anywhere. Oh, no. I like the chocolate ones. What are those? Chocolate are, with the... Chocodiles? These are, uh, oh. these are dark days. But this has nothing to do with my professional ball career. <laughs> <laughs> good, Who else got good a question? Answer. Bill, actually, I was wondering um, mm-hmm. what features you will be including in the newest iPhone that's coming out next month. Uh, I'm planning to include what I call the app app. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me more. Which is you push a button and yes. an apple appears oh. with, with, with like a whole apple, not the apple bite taken out of it. Oh. And you come near it and then the sound effect of an apple. <laughs> happens and then the apple as we all know it with the bite taken out appears that so is like a... the mirror looking into a mirror app so, mm-hmm. it's, so it's practical <laughs> <laughs> so it's practical <laughs> Colin called it following the follower but i'm with you on that <laughs> oh, that's awesome. uh, i have a question for you yes what made you decide on the name of sunny for your newest dog at the white house sunny um is legally my son <laughs> that would explain the afro. Yeah. Oh. Not, ge- not genetically. Hello. I said legally. What? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Again, I am from James. <laughs> I know. Your roots are showing. I'm not talking about your hair. <laughs> hey, Bill, a uh, question oh. I yes, had. Uh, sure. Not for you, but for another guest, but yeah. you can <laughs> answer this. Um, yeah. Are there any other pictures you wish you'd texted out to people instead of pictures of your dick? Um, <laughs> Again, please tell the wa- Wizards of Waverly Place audience. <laughs> and by by, di- by Dick, I'm sure you're speaking of Dick Chud now, the founder of Comedy Sports. <laughs> of course. Hey, of course. <clears throat> Why would you send pictures of him when you could have sent something else? What What do you wish you, you could have sent? sent Martin Demott? I I else. wish I wish I would have sent out a picture of a lemon split in two. Oh. To show. Wait. No, not all. <laughs> that was the noise I was looking for. <laughs> I always used to love lemons and like the little rascals when somebody would be ready to like blow a big trumpet solo. All they'd have to do is suck on a lemon and it'd screw up their act. Yeah. <laughs> you can't have an embouchure when you're on yeah. a lemon. I'm going to screw up somebody's show by eating lemons. I saw you <laughs> earlier with some lemon over there. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, lastly, uh, Bill, you've had a number yeah. one show. Mm-hmm. Your film, The Butler, was number one at the box office last mm-hmm. weekend. You yes. started a whole network. Amen. What is next for you? <laughs> um, well, I'm still focusing some of my some of my energy on uh, my network. Oh yes. Which uh, has been a lot of effort. Um, Stedman um, has been with me through just about everything, and I yes. I gotta thank thank the Lord for men like him. BCN, right? Your network. Yes, exactly. Oh, God, BCN. Network. The I'm running out of oxygen. Network. <laughs> Hell, it's not. <laughs> All right. Well, Bill, uh, we that, I think we lot. learned a lot. That was a ton of show. Today. That was a ton. <laughs> it was a ton. <laughs> That's a ton of show. You're welcome, America. Yeah. Uh, listen, I should plug uh, and move fast on this because if you're listening to the show, Bill will be performing Thursday, August 22nd, which is probably the day we're getting the show up. So mm-hmm. if you listen to the show right away, Immediately. that night, Thursday night, he'll be at the second annual class of Chicago Comedy Festival alongside friends of the show, the Farley Brothers. Mm-hmm. And the legendary Emo Phillips. And the second half of the show features short films from former guest of the show, Willie Laszlo. Yay! So it's all, all, all family. That's pretty cool. It's all family. Two That's separate admissions f- for the live show and the video shorts, but it's only 10 bucks a piece. That's so, at the Fake Gallery, right? Yeah, at the Fake Gallery on Melrose in Los Angeles. Go to classofchicagocomedyfest.eventbrite.com. 
Eventbrite weaseling their way into these URLs. It's Melrose <laughs> and Heliotrope, I believe. Yep. And one of my favorite names of a Those street were my in, in school colors. Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> Melrose and Heliotrope. It's right next to the Ukrainian uh, event. Cultural center. Cultural center and across from the uh, Mexican church in a mall. Yeah, right there, in so. the little storefront. For real? Yeah. There's a church in the storefront. The Ukrainian right Cultural the Center in the Mexican storefront church across the street. This yeah. guy, the Thomas guy, right here in person. Wow. <laughs> Google Maps. And, right, in, and here. right next to the two competing bicycle shops. That's like Bicycle <laughs> Corner there. There's like Orange 10 bicycles and the bicycle kitchen, and the yeah, and they all fight like a. Guy, why are you show. buying his bicycle? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mine 10 speed. He's don't want to <laughs> <laughs> All right, but uh, stick around, Bill, because we're going to do one last thing. And feel All free right. to chime in in our final closing number to every show. Oh, we have birthdays. As we always go out with a bang and turn things over to Karen for her weekly look at the birthdays of those who make the movies. Karen? All right, let's start off this week of birthdays wishing a happy birthday to Downton Abbey's butler, Mr. Carson. Played by Jim Carter, who turns 65, but can play anywhere from 65 to 65. I have to drink twice now. Oh, I've got so many <laughs> jokes about Abbey. that. Downton, <laughs> was it Downton what? Downton Abbey. He In plays who? the butler, Jim Carter. All right, we need more beer. Uh, all right, Jim I Carter. I to correct you, but I think it's Downtown Abbey. Down, yeah. <laughs> you guys are all stupid. He is well known for his droopy dog appearance and his ample eyebrows. I was watching a show. Not to be confused with Jim Cotta, which is a whole different thing. <laughs> Mr. Cotta, I gotta know. You may remember him from the role. You guys will know this. If you don't know Downton Abbey, you'll remember him as Deja Vu in the movie Top Secret. Who was that? This is Chevalier. Montage. Détente. <laughs> Avant-garde. <laughs> and Deja Vu. Have we not met before, monsieur? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> you may remember him from his role as Deja Vu from the movie Top Secret. <laughs> this is Chevalier. <laughs> oh, we get the All right, anyway. <laughs> We're doing a bit. Oh, I was so proud of him. He that. sounds familiar, but I can't quite place him. Joke acknowledged. <laughs> feel, feel, feels like I've met him before. I don't know. <laughs> You're stupid. Now, let's also move on to wish a happy birthday to America's sweetheart, Amy Adams, who turns 37. Drink. But can play your so Please. stupid. She, was she America's Sweetheart 2012 or 2011? Yeah, I don't know. I just always say that. Who when is I, the reigning I, America's Sweetheart? This is one. Who's been dethroned? Well, I think Reese Witherspoon was for a while. <gasps> she's gone now. And she's well, gone. Years and Julia ago. Roberts was Because she's time. been beaten out by. Uh, it might be Selena Gomez. <gasps> she is nobody's no, sweetheart. No, no, no. She's no, no, a no. sweetheart of Waverly Place. She's America's <laughs> tart. Oh, please. I Selena gonna, Gomez? Is Lindsay Lohan in like a diabetic coma? She's a. Sweetheart. <laughs> 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 Uh, so I was saying Amy Adams can play anywhere from 37 to, wait, wait a minute, she is 37. She can play an Oscar nominee to Paul's wife. Yes. Honey, you forgot that it's apostrophe I S. wrote that in there. Mm -hmm. I would like that to happen. <laughs> we were first introduced to her in Junebug, but do you people know what movie she actually appeared in before that? Big movie. Amy Adams you're talking about? Yeah, it's a big movie with a big famous actor. Adam, are you cheating? Uh, no, I'm trying to find America's Sweetheart. I do believe it's Emma Stone, isn't it? <laughs> oh, it is. <laughs> I think that's uh, 2013, America's Sweetheart. AmericasSweetheart.com, probably. All know. right. No, no, so, Amy Adams you know was in what? She was in a movie. Superman Returns. Oh uh, no, no, the um, oh the uh, the 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 fairy book, the 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 thing. The no. Enchanted is wrong. <laughs> that is wrong. Did but you I actually looked that. that up on IMDb that there's a tab that says Sweetheart? America's Sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> And you're not on it. What is that all about? I know. Yeah, change that. I tried. I know. Uh, um, the movie. Guess one more time. Anybody? Oh no! Wait. Jamie Congo. got it. Congo. Catch Jamie, no, not Jamie. Snakes more on a plane. Guy than you guys. Jamie got it. Wait. It she played the nurse. Catch to me his? if you can. She had braces. That's why I don't recognize her in that one. <laughs> She's the and before that, she yeah, began. Yeah, the nurse to to his fake doctor. And before that, she began her career working in dinner theater. And I've done a ton of dinner theater, so why have I never worked with Amy Adams? The closest I ever got was working with crazy-eyed Sharon Forsher. And drink! <laughs> <laughs> Should drink. drink. <laughs> <laughs> and happy birthday to Kristen Wiig, who turns 39. Get can play anywhere from a funny woman on SNL to a funny woman in all movies. Did you know that Kristen Wiig plays all of the funny women parts that Melissa McCarthy refuses to lose weight for? <laughs> just, little known fact. Just a little known fact. Throw that out there. And known fact. <laughs> known fact. <laughs> now it's known. And lastly, let's wish a happy birthday to Kenny Rogers, oh. who turns 74. He does not know when to fold them. 
<laughs> he just oh. does not know when to fold them. But he can play anywhere from the gambler to the really surprised oh. gambler. I tell you, he said work done. I saw That's him face in concert, and that was one of the funnest concerts I ever saw. Was was yeah, was night. Kenny Rogers at the Hollywood Bowl for Fourth of July? And what was great is. He did like a truncated version of all of his songs because everybody in the audience was 87 years old. And he knew it was like, we're in and we're out. So he did he did like the first verse, the bridge, and then he's done. And I'm like, this is the greatest, greatest hits I've ever been been to. But the best part of the show was that like two songs into the show, he spotted a guy in the front row who was clearly there against his will. And so Kenny said, look, buddy, I can clearly tell you're not having a good time. He said, so I'm going to make a deal with you. He said, I bet you, you know more of my songs than you're willing to admit. So every time I sing a song that you know, raise your hand and I'll give you $20. So the guy couldn't not raise his hand because even if he's lying to make $20, he's raising his hand to That's prove that brilliant. he... And all night, guy would raise his hand. You'd see Kenny, without breaking stride, just reach into his pocket, <laughs> throw $20 down to the guy throughout the entire show. It was a really wonderful, fun time. Very, that's brilliant. Thank you. brilliant Anybody remember part. the movie Six Pack? Hell oh, yes. No, only because I saw it a million times on HBO. I was going to say, this brings up a topic that i got to bring up one of these weeks, is those cable movies that were on oh. all the time, and yeah. you only know them from being on every single day when they invented the HBO. Night the lights you, went feel out like, you feel like there's always commercials in them. If you saw them without commercials, that'd be weird. Escape from New York was on constantly. Six Pack. The original Clash of the Titans. Clash Tight Tempest was on constantly on HBO. Lone Wolf McQuaid. Lone, Lone Wolf McQuaid. Uh, yeah. That was Mask. Who else is having a birthday? Uh, yeah. And lastly, I just wanted to say this. I, I just, I mean, it's actually a truth. Share. It's not so much a comedy thing. I saw a picture of Kenny Rogers recently, and he looked like he should be on a bucket of chicken. <laughs> so there you go. Happy <laughs> he birthday, does look like everybody. Everybody. He does look like right. There's the birthdays. Yay. And he did. Kenny <laughs> Rogers. Uh oh. Was oh, that the? That's not the joke you're making. No. no. He, he just looks, looks like, like he was wearing white. He had a tie and he was all pulled back. Kenny Rogers Roasters. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Wow. <laughs> oh my God, who knew? He's fitting into his role quite nicely. <laughs> All right, audience, there's two shows. <laughs> <laughs> that wraps another movie showcast, everybody. Together we are the movie guys. Individually we are. Follow Here's this guy and you. Follow us at Twitter at the movie guys, on Facebook at uh, Facebook.com slash the movie guys, as well as YouTube, iTunes, SoundCloud, Vine, the whole dizzle. Thanks to Bill Cott. Yay, Bill! For coming on, sharing stories, getting down to business. And board op Jamie Clark Elvington. Yay, Jamie! And of course, Steve Schultz for his writing contributions to the show each and every week. And for the, uh, yeah, Bill will belong with him. And remember, you can always find everything we're up to at themovieguys.net. Thanks for listening. No when to fold up. No when to walk away. And no when to run. You never count your money. When you're sitting at the table, there'll be time enough for counting. When the dealing's done, you got to know when to hold up.